Mr. Sawyer is here, we can start. Good evening, please rise. <laughs> Pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening to the 14 April 2014 Board of Selectors meeting. And what is a public hearing pursuant to RSA 31 colon 95 dash small b? Under the provisions of RSA 3195-small-d, comma, 3-a, to apply for, accept, and expend unanticipated monies, a state homeland security grant of approximately $25,400 for the purchase of EMS transport equipment for the transport of bariatric patients from the New Hampshire State <coughs> Homeland Security Program. Chief, the floor is yours. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I was approached by the state of New Hampshire regarding this grant as they wish to deploy specialized equipment uh, designed to improve the safety for the transportation of bariatric patients. A bariatric patient uh, generally is considered as a patient that weighs greater than 400 pounds. Um, over the last three years, the town of Hampton has transported uh, 22 times bariatric patients. So there certainly is a need for the equipment within the community. The state has uh, um, uh, chosen us as one of 12 communities statewide to receive this grant and this equipment. Uh, I certainly encourage the town to accept the funds, especially uh, as we're in uh, default budget. This is not equipment that we could ordinarily purchase ourselves. And it does greatly improve not only the safety for the patients, but it also improves the safety for our first responders as it uh, enables them to safely lift um, these larger patients into our ambulance for transport. Thank you, sir. Any public comment, please? Public comment, Mr. Murders, please. <coughs> Our Moody, three Thompson Road. What obligation do we have to share this equipment? Because this is funded through a New Hampshire State Homeland Security grant, the intent is that the equipment would be shared within any of the communities of Rockingham County. That does not mean that we as the receiving community are responsible for responding to any other community, just that we have to make the equipment available if another community wishes to utilize it. In other words, we're not going to transport it to Nottingham or Londonderry. We're going to keep it here. Please that, address the chief. That, there, that they can, that some other ambulance, uh, obviously uh, we're just, a, we're just a, an emergency uh, ambulance uh, service. So some other ambulance is going to come here and pick up this equipment that they're, they're, they are fitted out for and go to the call. 911 call? That is the understanding. The equipment will be placed in several other communities. Um, I don't have the list of all 12 uh, within the state or even within Rockingham County. The conditions require that the equipment be available to other communities, but there is no requirement for the town of Hampton to deliver that equipment to any other community. Uh, 12 in the state. Uh, I imagine most of those in the southern tier of the state, as you have one county up near Canada that only has 30,000 people in it. <coughs> Rockingham has over 300,000. Uh, I would say if they're only doing 12, and this is Rockingham County, that putting it in a fire station in the southeast corner of the county is pretty stupid. It should be in the center of the county. And I, I just await how this plays out. Uh, you can be pretty sure that we'll be running off to some foreign, some town we don't even have mutual aid with. Uh, maybe even out of state for all I know. But uh, if it's just for Hampton and area mutual aid calls, fine. But I really see us going beyond 
there with this. I know how these things play out. Chief, have you completed your presentation? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Would you like to roll here? I'm sorry, please. Ryan Lapp on 27 I Street. Um, how does this get built out if we transport? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, somewhere else other than Hampton. Well, it's it's supplying walking in. It's not our intention to be transporting other patients from communities other than Hampton. If we transport any patient, anytime we transport, we bill for the transport. If we were, uh, like regularly or routinely, we provide mutual aid with our immediately surrounding communities: Seabrook, Hampton Falls, Exeter, Northampton, Rye, Stratum. When we transport the patient, we bill. Uh, in fact, under Medicare rules, only the transporting ambulance is permitted to, to do the billing. Okay. Now, are we going to upgrade one truck? Or are we? Uh, I don't understand what we're upgrading. Uh, we're purchasing equipment. It's it has nothing to do with the actual ambulance. The um, the cots that the patients are transported on, the brackets that secure the cart into the ambulance are the same brackets that we presently use now. It's just that the uh, the patient transport device, the cot itself, yeah. is designed to support the heavier weight and is of a, a design so that it can accommodate the larger patients. No, and don't. then they also are providing us some lifting equipment so that when we do have to lift the patient in the house and move them to the stretcher, there's additional lifting equipment so that rather than our personnel utilizing all their brute strength to move a, a patient, uh, we have the specialized equipment to do it safer. Now, do you have to go back to the station to get the equipment, or are you just going to carry it on? Um, no, it would be left in the station. If we find that there is a need for it, it would be requested to the scene. Um, I looked at the statistics in Rockingham County. We're the third largest or third highest rate of transports within Rockingham County. So uh, I, th I think that's probably the reason why we were selected. And we're the only ones in Rockingham <coughs> County now? I don't know. I don't have the list of the 12. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Any further public comment, please, from the audience? Selectman Wilson. Closing the public hearing at 7.12 p.m. <coughs> um, I'm always suspicious when the state approaches us to do something. Uh, Chief, you said make the equipment available. Uh, suppose a another town calls up. Now they're going to have to wait if they're at the scene with a patient and they'd have to send some of their personnel over here to pick this these items up and bring them back to their community. Very likely. I know in the past the incidents that we have had we were unable to transport in some cases and we had to request additional assistance. So unfortunately, not having equipment immediately available means that you have to wait until that equipment is. Mm. Emergency situation, that would be a problem, I would imagine, a literal emergency. Well, we're not and, allowed and looking at it from the town of Hampton's yeah. perspective, this puts us at an advantage over any of the other communities because we will have it immediately available to transport our residents immediately, whereas if the equipment were stationed in, let's say, Epping, mm -hmm. and we needed to transport a Hampton resident, mm -hmm. we would be the one having to respond to Epping to fetch the equipment and bring mm -hmm. it back. So I see now this I've putting us at, a, at, a, at an advantage. I was concerned the last time Mr. Schweltzer was in talking to us about the level of unpaid uh, emergency transports in, in the fire department. Are most of the individuals, do you think, in this condition that we're transporting Hampton residents or with the beach population, I, I'm a little concerned about well, our uh, equipment and our manpower. And Honestly, in, in regards to whether they're residents or not, if someone makes a call for emergency service, we're going to respond, and yep. if they need to go to the hospital, yep. we're, we're not going to discriminate against them. We're mm -hmm. going to transport them, regardless of their ability to pay, because we don't know that at the time. I appreciate that that's your mission. I'm just a little concerned. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Sir? Selectman Griffin. So you solidly are behind this? Absolutely. I think yes. this is a good idea. I know I know on several occasions within the past 12 months that we have had to transport patients 
and the crews have come back to us and said, you know what, there's no way that we could safely do this mm. without calling for additional help, mm. without risking injury to our personnel. So I yeah. think this, this gives us, especially having it here in the community, gives us certainly an advantage. Well, thank you. I appreciate that you're right on top of it. Thank you. Select and bridle, please. Having been retired nine years, but <laughs> 28 years in the fire service, one of the biggest injuries the guys on the ambulance always had was lifting, bending, twisting, turning. And anything we can do to help them alleviate that problem, you're going to alleviate, have less workers' comp and everything else, I think it's a great idea. I'm fully supportive of it. Yeah, and, and actually, uh, Select and bridle, uh, Thinking back to when we worked together on the ambulance, uh, so much has changed, and so much of it has been focused at buying the equipment to reduce the Absolutely. injuries to our personnel. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our patient transport from the procedures we used to use where we would carry the stretcher, stretcher into in. the second floor, put the patient on it, and carry them yeah. back out. Yeah. Now we have specially designed equipment to remove the patient safely without us having to lift, and then put them on the cot and the cots are powered so that it's not us physically doing the lift, okay. which is where the injuries occur. Yeah. Absolutely. Select the window, please, sir. I agree with, with Rusty 100%, and I think, you know, it's a financial saving because if people mm -hmm. aren't out on disability, then I don't work in this comp, it saves mm -hmm. the town. So I think it's a great idea, and second-guessing it, don't need to do that, really. One more quick follow-up. Yes, ma'am. Is OSHA factor in this anywhere? Um, not typically as it relates to to us um, it's it's a little bit more complicated than that because we're a municipal entity we're not required to adhere to all OSHA regulations uh -huh. but we we are required to adhere to New Hampshire Department of Labor okay. rules and laws and generally they're not as prescriptive as OSHA is they just say you shall and then we have to figure out how to do it. And OSHA tends to be a little bit more prescriptive. They tell us, here's how you get there. So we use them as usually the models the to meet the uh, okay. Department of Labor laws. Okay. Any further things from the board? Thank you. A motion, please? I'll make a motion that we accept this grant. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to leave the paperwork with you. I've marked off the pages that need signatures. Uh, there is a section where at the bottom it says it needs initials. It needs initials of three members of the board. Anywhere else it only needs your signature as the chair. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Welch, may I? Certainly, sir. Thank you. Roman 2 Public Hearing, RSA 40 colon 14 small a, second public hearing 1, Litchfield Drive, rain adjustments to the town. Mr. Welch, please. Mr. Chairman, this is a second public hearing required by RSA 40, 40 colon 14A, dealing with a requirement for the town to be in a secondary position to maintain um, the drain adjustment, which is proposed for a nearly completed subdivision. It's, it's just about ready for signature as far as I know uh, on Juniper Drive. We went to Public Works. We discussed this with Public Works. Uh, Public Works has indicated we, we do not possess the manpower, we do not possess the experience, and we do not possess the equipment or the financial resources to manage or maintain any of these systems, this one in particular. Uh, as a result, we'd like to have this uh, easement denied so that we're not responsible for it. In a nutshell, that's it. Thank you, sir. Any public comment, please? <coughs> Any comment from the board? Selectman Wilson, please. I'll make a motion to deny. Uh, second. Oh. We have to wait. This okay. is only the second public hearing. Oh, the next just meeting. All okay. right. All right. Just got one more meeting. <laughs> you got me enthusiastic, I hate Fred. <laughs> So this is Thank the second you. of the statutory requirements. And the then second required public hearing, and next week there will be a vote by the board to determine whether or not you will accept that recommendation. Thank so you, So you close you, the public hearing at 7.18 p.m.? Per your, per your instruction right now, yes, ma'am. So that public hearing is closed. The public <coughs> comment period, Roman 3. <coughs> Selectman Waddell. Uh, nothing. Okay. No public comment is public. I'm sorry, public public comment thought, period. You threw me off. Okay. Well, public yeah, comment period, please. Yeah. Mr. Moody. 
Art Moody, I offered Mr. Pierce the first uh, chance here. When I go to Concord to, to testify in the legislature, all the state reps get first, and all the state senators are first, no matter when they show it up. So I figured I'd offer it to him, and he refused. Uh, Art Moody, I say that again, I guess. Uh, I noticed the uh, fire chief's car is gone, the 2000 Subaru or whatever it was. Uh, whatever it was. Uh, and I hope on the manager's report we'll find out uh, whether he's followed the last board's deci decision to junk it or my subsequent recommendation that they put it in the town au auction that he's arranging. Uh, I notice you have uh, on here, you're going to sign the tree regulations, the ordinance on ornamental tree care and rules on town land. Unfortunately, the public hearing that was on the agenda last week was not held, and so I couldn't make any comments. Uh, in fact, both public hearings were not held, uh, were not opened up to the public. Uh, so I c hope you keep that in mind. It was not available with the posting of last week's meeting, so I don't have a heck of a lot of knowledge of what's in it, but I know it's four or five pages. Uh, number three. Uh, I'd like to uh, have part two of my trust fund uh, spiel. Uh, I asked last week that you investigate, not invest, but investigate uh, the results of uh, 2013 trustees of trust funds, $20 million at the end of the year, uh, according to their MS-9 in the town report. And uh, only one su real successful was the largest one, $16.5 million uh, at the end of the year value of the principal of the real estate trust fund, which they had a good year, 650000 interest. Uh, and uh, we don't know what the fees are, full fees. And uh, uh, they appreciated the value, something like uh, over a million, I think, during the year. Uh, that's as of 31 December, a point data that uh, could it change the next day for all I know, or two days later since the next day was a holiday and the stock market was closed. Uh, there's no mention about collateralization of these, all of these funds, 20 million are out of, t out of state in Kansas uh, in three funds and there's no in indication they've been fully collateralized as required by the <coughs> law by federal securities or bank securities in a safe place as the trust fund laws seem to require. There's no indication of what the total fees are as required by law. And one, the 16 and a half million is all on one mutual aid fund. When there were only three trustees up until 2007, we had an investment policy that reviewed every year that said no more than one million in any one security in the real estate trust fund, which is the only one they put out f to a uh, bank uh, trust fund, uh, trust department for uh, investing. The, all the others they d we did in-house. Uh, so all 16 and a half billion or 17 million value of that trust fund is uh, was at 31 December in one security. Uh, I would like to. I mentioned last week that you're spending $500 for probate court to get a new small trust fund of 3,800 from the library trustees to the trustees of trust funds. The manager uh, mentioned the Senate bill that. Uh, was filed on, on behalf, I guess, of town office, second floor, uh, 
to put the cemetery burial trust fund income as it comes in during the year to sell a $165 grave or something to get it to the trust funds. Uh, despite the fact that all those trust funds lost money last year in the stock market that they put it in, uh, you want to get it to them sooner, I guess. Now, at cross purposes is the real estate trust fund income that is given back to the town monthly during the year. Instead of kept in the fund, last year they said they made 9.2% net on the real estate trust fund. They're one big success. Now why would you put 30, 40, 50,000 a month from January through December back into the town general fund if it can make 9.2 percent if you keep it there the rest of the year? Thank you Mr. Moody and just a point of order you're approaching six minutes. And uh, tax anticipation interest is much less than 9.2 percent. Thank you, sir. Further public comment, please. Uh, good evening. This is the first time I've been back to yak about much of anything in a while. I'll try to be brief. I have three questions for Mr. Nyan, uh, which I request that he respond to during his appointment with the board. Question one involves the right to know law, RSA 91, which is a public document. What could merit a meeting behind closed doors with a person from the Attorney General's office to talk about the right to know law, RSA 91? Is this a conflict with the spirit of the right to know law? Perhaps Mr. Nine could explain why this meeting is, is going to be behind closed doors. Question two involves the monies donated to the HBAC for the gala in 2012. RSA 216J says any donations to the HBAC must go into the master plan fund for the master plan maintained by the office of the state treasurer. <coughs> I understand that those monies collect in excess of $60,000 according to the newspaper went into another fund maintained by DREAD called the Master Fund, not the Master Plan Fund. Problems with the weather prevented a lot of the plan benefits from occurring, consequently leaving a considerable amount of those funds left over. Could the HBAC give an accounting of those funds to the public? Question number three, the HBAC spending is limited to areas associated with the Master Plan as per RSA 216J. So only five sections to as I recall. So, <clears throat> so again, perhaps Mr. Nine could explain under what authority does the HBAC solicit and spend monies on parties and anything else? I request that you ask him those questions. Thank you very much. Further public comment this evening. And seeing none, select Modell. Community announcements, please. All set. Okay. Select Modell. Nothing. Nothing. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mr. Welch? Sir. Any uh, announcements or community calendar? No, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. Roman 5, number 1, Diana Martin, Parks and Recreation Director, Departmental Update. Please, ma'am. <coughs> Good evening, Good evening, everyone. Well, we just finished up all of our winter stuff, so we um, have a few things to announce to you tonight that we've been working on. Our park maintenance department just started up. We started back up on April 2nd, and then we have a, a third employee that will be starting up toward the end of May. True Green Camelon will be doing some of our lawn care services again this year for various spots around town and we'll start their applications in the next few weeks. We just sent out our bid <coughs> for the garage again and is supposed to be returned back to us by April 28th. We are in the process of finishing up the designs for the signs at Tuckfield, Eaton Park and Kids Kingdom and we'll be for moving forward with that very soon. 
The parks employees have been doing a spring cleanup for all the fields and making any repairs that needed to be made in preparation for the sports teams to start playing on them. This past weekend was the first weekend for HYA slash Cal Ripley and Baseball and the Babe Ruth Baseball League. Parks employees have gone um, to all of the playgrounds to inspect all of them and make any repairs that need to be made now that the snow is finally gone. Trash and debris is being picked up at all the parks. Um, I'm working on the lawn mowing bid for the parks and the pumping stations as well as the bid for the ball field lights at Eaton Park. Hopefully those, the, lawn mower, the lawn bid is actually done. That will probably go out tomorrow. Uh, Tuck Field is in the process of getting cleaned up for the summer season and we are um, hopefully tomorrow I'll be ordering the benches from last winter that were ordered now that spring is here and we can actually put them out so I just got the last wording from one of the two people today so I'll be ordering those tomorrow. Um, in the parking lots, it's funny to even say this already but we actually opened the Ashworth Ave parking lot in March for a concert this year which is the earliest that we've ever ever opened. Um, we made about a thousand dollars so that was good we're st and we're still like taking applications and interviewing and stuff and hopefully we'll know who's coming back by the middle of May. We're also in the process of purchasing all the supplies for the sheds in order to open up for the future. Um, for recreation programs we have scheduled the fields for use for the softball and baseball seasons for all of the people that use the fields. We advertise for all of our staff openings including camp counselors, parking lot staff and lifeguards and that started in early March. We're in the process of receiving and reviewing the applicants for employment. Even though we do not have our staff yet, we are setting up all of their trainings. Um, our co rec softball and men's softball leagues are being formed now and should get underway on May 6th for the summer season. The K-2 sports program is in its last session for the school year. We just scheduled our <coughs> annual Senior Citizen Club luncheon for June 12th and this year it's going to be at the Victoria Inn. The I'm Trying 5K road race has been set up and will be held per selectman's permission on June 29th at 8 a.m. I don't know if any of you have seen that yet. It's gone to the police department, our parade department or whatever. Um, we are running all of our fitness classes right now and these include Zumba, Strength Circuit, Power Hour, Total Body, 10 Minutes, Let's Get Moving Yoga for Kids, General Yoga, All Levels Yoga and the Build Bonus. We just had our annual Easter Egg Dig at the beach this past weekend um, which was awesome. We couldn't have asked for better weather. It was unbelievable. Don't you think Selectman Dean was there? It was awesome. It was awesome. There were Very tons well of people there. And he grabbed up a lot of the eggs. He did. I have the golden eggs. You have the two golden ones that no one ever found. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, we have also have set up a number of other special events that will be coming up soon, including the Fishing Derby on May 10th, um, Go Skateboarding Day on June 21st, the Strawberry Festival on June 15th, and the Arts in the Park program that will run on Fridays in June, July, and August. And we ask people to check the schedules because I think we have seven out of eight set up. Um, all of these special events are free to the community. We just completed our first trip to the Boston Bruins versus the Buffalo Sabres this past weekend for their final home game and that was also on Saturday and they won so it was a great day Saturday. We have also set up a number of summer programs and camps that are on our website in a, and our spring summer brochure which I sent, I gave all of you one of these mm, to check yeah. out what we got going but for the public we have uh, Tuckfield Summer Day Camp, Cricket Safari Camp, surf lessons with cinnamon rainbows, archery lessons, challenger sports, challenger soccer camp, creative kids art camp, field hockey camp, Hershey track and field, camp discovery, Lego robotics, uh, warrior workout, camp a lot of fun, theater camp, <coughs> lacrosse camp, flag football training camp, watercolor classes, basketball camp with Donnie Dazzle Seals of the Harlem Wizards, warrior hoof camp, and tennis lessons with Steve Stanton and we're currently taking registration for all of those. Um, Renee has set up a couple of Red Sox trip. We have one trip going to the Red Sox against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium on Saturday, June 28th. And um, we have a Red Sox trip against the Tampa Bay Rays at Fenway Park on May 31st. And there are still tickets left for the Sox Rays game at Fenway and those are $60 a person. <coughs> Renee has set up a trip to New York City, North Conway overnight, Cape Cod and Nantucket, Foxwoods Casino, Freeport Shopping, DeMillo's Floating Restaurant, 
and three theater trips to a Gunquit Playhouse and the North Shore Music Hall. And those trips include Anything Goes, Mary Popkins, Grease, Billy Elliot, The Musical, The Witches of Eastwick, and Chicago. And those all range between $60 and $64 for those theater tickets. And uh, we do have a turf show. <coughs> I'm kind of excited about we're going to have a turf show at Tuck Field on June 18th. And there will be Parks and Rec professionals from all over New England coming to the turf show. Um, it's during the day on a Wednesday. Um, and so we'll have a little bit of activity going on at Tuck Field, and we're going to get a little bit of free work on some of our fields, so I'm kind of excited about that. And last but not least, the lifeguards. We've put out advertisements for lifeguards late February, early March. Um, we have two returning guards that we know of right now. We still have to contact a couple others, but we haven't had any applications yet for lifeguards, so I'm still on the hunt for lifeguards for this year. And that's my report. I do have one other thing that I wanted to talk about after. I don't know if you have any questions first about the report. Why don't you uh, address your follow-on and then we'll, we'll go to the board. <laughs> well, I, I hope it's okay to bring this tonight. I just received it today from Winnicott High School. Um, they're asking for to use the parking, the Ashworth Ave parking lot on May 17th in the evening from about 4 to 6 for their junior prom grand march at the seashell complex and they ask for it every year and we do we have granted it in the past it's a nice thing for them and um, I just want to get permission again or or not permission whatever you decide so that I can let them know wonderful thank you Selectman <coughs> Wilson um, Diana on the reconstruction of the, the new signs uh, kids, kids kingdom I understand that there are plaques that people bought when that first went up those will be affixed to the sign yeah what it was was we had one gigantic sign and the top part of it was sort of like a castle and the bottom part mm -hmm. had all the names on it so we took pictures of all of that so those will it'll still be probably one big piece with all the names still yeah. so. I know the people who donated and everything care pretty of passionately yeah. about that yeah. Um, the uh, <coughs> oh first aid. I think I saw you uh, getting in first aid kits for the sheds for the parking lot last fall, so those will be ready to go. I just bought some on Saturday night. I made a special trip to buy them because they were on sale somewhere. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so so each of the parking lot sheds will be equipped with first aid as yep. well as <coughs> facilities. Yep. Great. Um, the lights. Talk to us. Where are we? <coughs> Exciting. I've talked Eaton to Mus Park. I've talked to Musco Lighting. They're helping me to write up a bid, and as soon as I get, as soon as he gets back in touch with me on the actual specs that I need for the lights, then that bid will go out to uh, contractors in the area. Estimate of time to get it going because spring's coming. Well, I said to them, I would like to really have those lights up before the softball season, and they yeah. said, yeah, that's not going to happen. But they did say that they would be done by the middle of the softball season, they were hoping. Okay. okay keep us posted. Yep. Thank you. So I don't know if any other rec department does such a huge... Um, such a huge spectrum of, of <coughs> offerings. Um, you, you don't need to get any of the exercise classes. <laughs> Just reading that will keep well, you in try, shape. We try to offer something for everyone. It's amazing. So. <coughs> that is amazing. Thank you. Selectman Griffin. No. Thank, Thank you. you. You have your employees. Do you get many that come back every year? Mm -hmm. Do we, are they, are they paid the same as uh, somebody coming in new? Or do we have a pay scale for them? Is that? Is there, is there some encouragement to have people come back again and again? Obviously, if we train them one year, yeah. that that's that that employee's potential is being a little more valuable. Right. Well, we don't have an actual scale, and I actually tried um, talk to the town manager, and he suggested that I talk with um, Wanda and the HR to try and come up with something. But what it has been is three percent raise, which isn't a lot if you're making eight dollars an hour it's like a quarter but there were a few years in there where we um, we weren't allowed to give raises out so but if somebody's come back for yeah. three or four years and somebody comes in are they still getting paid the same as that person that just came in no. so there because is a they would have had some well, I have some that I have some parking lot employees that I've had for six or seven years and um, 
they've gotten a few 3% raises, but then the people coming right in start at $8 an hour. Okay. That's what the starting salary is for that and camp counselors okay. and parks employees. But maybe that's something we ought to look at it uh, over the over time. I, I think we made an adjustment like last year, didn't we, Fred? We did. Yeah. Okay. Good question. You all set, Mr. Bart? Yes, thank you. Mr. Waddell. I'd like to reiterate what Mary Louise said. I, when, I, when I first moved to Hampton, this is one of the most impressive mm -hmm. rec departments I Thank think you. I've ever seen. I think you do a, just an absolute super job, and your staff does. I mean, Thank you. For the, for the youth and everything, it's great. I do have a great staff, I will say That's that. That's great. Thank you. Director, thank you so much for All everything right. you do. Appreciate it. Um, anything on this one, Conant? Um, motion, please. I will so move to approve. Second. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I Thanks very much. Just looking for this. What? I get tired just looking for <laughs> <the list. laughs> A lot of work, Rusty. Thank you. Thank you. Number two, Kevin Schultz, Building Inspector, Building Department, Permit Fees, Update and Recommendations. Sir. Good evening. Thank you. Hi, Kevin. Yeah, this is just a follow-up. Um, I did uh, give the board a cover letter and some um, uh, copy of the proposed and the existing permit fee schedule. And like I I apologize if the cover letter was a little winded, but I wanted to <laughs> cover everything. And uh, but uh, it it it's been 11 years since we've looked at these uh, permit fees. So I felt it was overdue, and so, uh, like I stated in my letter to you, I did some comparisons of some compatible communities to see what their fees were, as well as using the ICC International Code Council mm -hmm. um, data um, navigator, they call it, for the region of the country. They're the ones that um, recommend and publish our code books mm -hmm. that the state have adopted, so they have... Um, you know, they do have formulas for different parts of the country on whereabouts the permit fee should be. So, you know, when I did all that, and some of the communities that I um, compared to was Plastow, Derry, Exeter, Hudson, Laconia, and Merrimack. And I kind of took a poll, actually, at our department head meeting, and those were the ones that we pretty much all agreed on, especially like Laconia, where that is a tourist community as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have two seasons pretty much just like we do here in Hampton, you know, where you get a big influx of people and, and work-related projects that go with those. So. so what you see in the current is what we've been pretty much charging for the last since 2003. And then on the proposed, you'll see the changes that are in red. And I was actually pretty surprised that I thought I was going to be more out of whack than what I was. Um, so I think the changes are modest, as you can see. I think the biggest change is was in the commercial construction aspect of it. We were kind of out of whack with that, um, only because of detail when it comes to these bigger projects, the information you got to take in, collect, number of inspections are normally a lot higher, and, uh, you know, reports from engineers, testing agencies, stuff like that that I review. So... I'd ask that you'd consider it, and I think it's time that we make this adjustment. Um, I'm not quite sure when to put it in. I was going to ask for some recommendation on that. I was thinking I'd like to at least post it, that it's coming um, in my department, as well as put it on the website that the new up-and-coming mm -hmm. sh should, you know, approve it, and give them some time, maybe put it into effect June 1st something like that but uh, I'm certainly open to any recommendations Let me that Wonderful. Thank you. ready for questions from the board sir? sure okay thank you Selectman Wolsey please uh, um, Kevin I noticed in Portsmouth's uh, building permit fee schedule they have a they have an emergency inspection fee and I, I, I confess I don't remember every line of what you put in here but that seemed logical um, when an incident requires an emergency inspection after normal business hours, said inspection shall be arranged with the building official. An emergency inspection fee of $60 an hour shall be assessed. Hmm. Time shall include travel to and from the inspection. I don't know whether that's something, does that occur very often? Is that something that, that we should consider? Um, I'll be honest with you, in 
all the years I've been here, I have responded probably four or five times from my home, off hours in an yeah. emergency situation. Um, one of them was when we had the uh, uh, big storm down at the beach several years ago yeah. and the houses were about to fall into the ocean. Yeah. Um, seven. You know, yeah. we worked, I think, close to 40 hours straight right through. Um, one where a house collided on Park Ave into a structure. There were some structural issues there. Mm. And, but I've only ran into that, I wouldn't even say a half a dozen times, mm. Ms. Woolsey. And then it has a section that ca is called work commencing before permit issuance, uh, people demolishing or altering or et cetera, you yeah. know, without a permit and then you catch up with them and uh, they're assessed a fee of 200% of the regular permit fee or $300, whichever is greater. Yeah, we already have in our permitting fees and in the ordinance yeah. that if someone starts a project without permits mm -hmm. and we happen to discover that, which occasionally happens, that we stop all the work, we require that they come in and get the proper permits, and they are assessed twice the fee. Yeah. Double. Mm -hmm. So if the permit fee would have been $300 for that project, based on the value, they're going to pay $600. Hmm. Okay. So you're comfortable with... I am. ...with the authority that you have to respond to, to unusual situations sure. like that. Yeah, I do. I feel comfortable with that. The fees. Okay. I think uh, I feel comfortable with this new adjusted... Um, schedule. Um, I do recommend though, and I did state that in my cover letter that, you know, and probably shame on me, but we don't go out 11 years. Maybe every three years we take a look at it. And mm. Mm. I do notice some of the other towns have health inspection. Um, oh, and the, uh, the occupancy permits. And we have that as well. I need to ask you about that. Okay. Yep. Yep. We have that down. That's the bottom one yep. on the um, T schedule. Yep. And we right. also have um, reinspection fees. And we also have fees if you fail two inspections. We have to go out a third time. Mm. You're going to pay us to go out there because yeah. well, you yeah. know, we're not teaching classes here. We're trying to help you as much as we can. but. Are you all set, ma'am? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Um, <clears throat> thank you for your advice. I think you do a great job in your department. Thank you. Um, and I think probably uh, in recent years with the economy being the way it was, it was probably better not to really make a lot of changes and probably didn't miss much because there wasn't really a whole lot going on compared to what's going to be going on in the future. Yeah, and I, I would agree with that. Um, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to get your fees so out of whack or that you push people underground either, you know what I mean? You know, you want it to be reasonable and, and compatible. And, um, you know, so you don't, you know, they, they try to avoid you. Well, I'm very comfortable with your suggestion and I think that this board should follow your advice and go with these. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The only question I had you already answered, and that was going to be, should we do it now or should we wait a couple <coughs> of months and, and give people a fair notice? And I think I agree with you. I think letting them know by June 1st so that they, they have a chance so that they can know it so that nobody's blindsided by it. And, yeah. and I think the fees, even at now, are still reasonable. So, Thank um, you. Um, yeah, I, I, that, I was trying to think that through, and I'm saying, you know, we got the website, and, um, yeah. You know, and uh, people are always, the traffic in and out of my office with the contractors and homeowners, I figure if I do a posting there and uh, just letting them know mm -hmm. what the new fees are going to be, post it, mm -hmm. and tell them, uh, um, you know, effective date as well as on the website, um, giving them five or six weeks, I think is fair. Wonderful. Select so Waddell. I agree with that, that you should post it first and give people mm -hmm. notice what's happening, and I, I think they're reasonable fees. And don't wait 11 years again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> really quickly, Mr. Chairman, yes, something Rick said, um, and and you mentioned it, Kevin, and being you know, not uh, not over grabbing, but on the other hand, your office is serving special 
individual needs that the people in the community shouldn't have to shoulder. These are people who for their own self-interest or whatever, their own economic uh, interests or uh, their own personal interest in their residences, uh, basically should be put, footing the bill for the services <coughs> that, they're Agree. that you're providing. Or the contractors who are profiting from whatever yes. they're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll make a motion. Thank you, sir. And just framing the motion, uh, these are, are fees that are uh, uh, delineated on April 9, 2014 memo is an attachment from the building inspector. Your motion, please, sir. Just to prove that. I make the motion that we do take the, the ones that you've recommended. Okay. The new effectively um, June. June 1st. Beautiful. I'll Wonderful. Start. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> I'm, I'm going to abstain discussion? on that because I no, I'm just I'm still thinking it over. But thank you, I'm going to abstain on. Okay, that. and you and you don't no further discussion. No further discussion. Okay, no. so uh, all, all hands in favor again, please. That's four with one abstention. Selectman Woolsey yeah. abstaining. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Kevin. Kevin. Thank you. Roman five number three, John Nyan, Hampton Beach Area Commission, annual review, sir. Good evening, Mr. Uh, Chairman and <coughs> Madam Selectman. Selectman. Um, John Nyan, Chairman of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Per RSA 216-J, colon 3, Roman numeral 8, we are required to once a year come to the Board of Selectmen and to give a quick update on uh, activities by the Beach Commission in the previous year. So my intent is tonight is to uh, basically talk, make sure that, and I, and I share this much more for the public than uh, the five of you along with Mr. Welch because you know the Beach Commission well. Uh, but I'd like just to take a minute and talk a little bit about the organization of the Beach Commission. Talk about its major objectives uh, that we have been set out to to do for the master plan. Uh, talk about the 2013 uh, summary of activity that we've been involved in. And also talk a little bit about the 2014 uh, objectives that the Beach Commission has. First of all, the breakdown um, is that we have nine members, two of which represent the town of Hampton, myself and Selectman Griffin. We have Chuck Rage and Richard Renier representing the Hampton Beach Village District. We have Robert Preston representing the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. Fran McMahon representing Rockingham Planning Commission. Bill Watson representing DOT. Dean Merrill, he's our commissioner at large. And Michael Hausman, Department of Resources and Economic Development. During the past year, um, I was the chairman Mr. Watson was the vice chairman, and Michael Hausman was the secretary treasurer. The uh, Beach Commission's major objectives, and I won't go through them all, but there's eight major duties of the Beach Commission. What I c would consider the top three would be that the first is to consult and advise uh, on implementation strategies of the master plan and also on land use and consult with the town and the state on the Hampton Beach Area Master Plan. The second is to assist the town in building and zoning code and design review. And then third is to consult the business community and residents to promote the major initiatives of the Hampton Beach Master Plan. We also, as a major objective, have the opportunity to receive and expend funds for the benefit of the Hampton Beach Area Commission, the Hampton Beach Master Plan, and improvements at Hampton Beach. Presently, we have $19,000 uh, in our account, which is held by the Department of uh, Resources and Economic Development, DREAD. 
In 2013, we focused on four major areas. Economic development was uh, one of our primary uh, areas. We had lots of discussions with business owners along the beach. Uh, we focused on providing assistance with uh, the uh, design of the architectural uh, concepts. Uh, we worked with the uh, um, planning and building, um, building inspector, making sure that uh, some of the things that we had designed and approved, which uh, the planning board also approved back in, I believe it was 2009, was design um, um, elements uh, as recommendations for any new development developers coming into Hampton Beach. The second is state partnership. And I should say state and local partnership. Uh, in 2013, we hosted back in April um, a operational meeting that the state parks held. During that meeting, one of the main focuses was trash. A lot of people came and talked about trash. Well, we knew that we couldn't do a whole lot, but we wanted to do our part. So we went out and worked with the Hampton uh, Beach Village District, their beautification uh, committee. And we, with our funds, um, bought 25 containers from the town of Hampton. And the beautification committee decorated those uh, barrels. And we donated those barrels to the state. And if any of you were at the beach last year, uh, along the seashell, and uh, primarily uh, the, the main area of the beach, you would see uh, extra uh, trash barrels, and they were decorated in uh, different uh, ocean and, and sea types of designs. One of the uh, major areas that we worked with uh, uh, with the state, uh, the Rockingham Planning Commission, throughout the year was Ocean Boulevard. Uh, we realized after our first try of trying to get federal funds for Ocean Boulevard, uh, the, the time that Mr. Welch, myself, and Senator Stiles went to Washington, we realized very quickly that <coughs> Washington would not listen to us on a project looking for transportation funds unless the state really looked at it as a priority. And as you know, the uh, New Hampshire Department of Transportation 10-year transportation plan, Ocean Boulevard was not in that plan. So last year, we worked very, very hard um, as a commission, working with Senator Stiles and then also Executive Council of Sununu, uh, to get Ocean Boulevard as an identified transportation project within the 10-year plan. Uh, the, at the present time, uh, the Senate has, uh, uh, is, is in the process of reviewing the entire state Department of Transportation Master Plan, um, and we still have Ocean Boulevard within the plan. If it's passed, signed by the governor, uh, then uh, in 2014 it would be identified that Ocean Boulevard is then a project that is considered a priority within the state of New Hampshire in its 10-year plan. Using that, we will be able to go back to Washington uh, with a whole different strategy and plan on looking at improving Ocean Boulevard if that's the decision that's going to be made. Finally, one of the things that uh, the Beach Commission is proud of was that we had won in 2012 the first grant ever by the Beach Commission. It was a $375,000 grant by the federal government through transportation under their TCSP program. And what that funds uh, were, what we had proposed in, in, in that application was give us an opportunity to go back to the 2003 master plan in transportation. And let's take a look at all of the um, areas of transportation within the master plan. And let's take a look at what has been done what has not been done, and what still needs to be done. Also, it's giving us an opportunity to look at new strategies around transportation. And then third, because of the uh, 
the makeup of the funds, we would be able to also use some of those funds uh, for engineering uh, and design types of programs that could help not only the state but the town in terms of its transportation planning for the uh, Hampton Beach area. Where we are right now, um, we uh, those funds are sitting with the Department of Transportation. It was the decision of the Hampton Beach Area Commission that DOT would be the administrator uh, on this project for us, if you will, their pro our project manager. And we are now in the process of reviewing um, consultants to come in and work with Department of Transportation and the Hampton Beach Area Commission in terms of uh, looking at the master plan and any other transportation issues uh, that we're, we are focusing in on. So that's a very big project uh, for us. Uh, our commissioners uh, are working hard uh, in that area. Uh, a lot of time and effort has already been spent um, and we, uh, we're looking to have a consultant on board uh, sometime this summer to really start looking at how we look at transportation um, within the master plan uh, in 2014 and, and, and forward. You all have a copy of my uh, annual report so I'm not going to go through the five project initiatives um, that uh, I identified for 2014. But I do want to highlight one additional one, and that is um, it, it has to do with the master plan. Uh, as chairman of the mass, uh, as chairman of the uh, Beach Commission, it's my job to make sure that our commissioners continue to be focused on all of the aspects of the master plan, and that when we meet once a month, that our focus is on the master plan. And so one of the things that I think is very, very important is taking a look now, 11 years later, when the master plan was uh, approved by the Board of Selectmen, the Planning Department, and the state, taking a look at where we are. And if you look at the master plan, there are six major areas of the master plan. Land use, reevaluation, economic review, infrastructure, environment, and transportation. So I have assigned all of the commissioners as subcommittees to work on each one of these six areas. And what we will be doing is we will be reviewing each of those sections in the master plan, seeing where we are 11 years later, seeing what still needs to be done, and also seeing if there are any areas within the master plan that probably is not um, appropriate after 11 years. So we'll be spending a lot of time uh, in 2014 to really focus in on the details of the master plan. Mr. Chairman, that is my, uh, my report. Um, I know that you had public comment. I, I know you had some uh, questions raised by a, a resident of Hampton. I am more than happy to answer all of those three questions if you would like me to. Let's uh, go to the board, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. That's what I was going to ask for starters. I have a little list. Um, John, explain the points that were brought up by Mr. Pierce. For example, the 2010, uh, 2012 gala uh, donations, et cetera. Sure. The uh, Department of uh, Dread, let's just call them Dread, mm -hmm. had uh, made a request to the Beach Commission mm -hmm. uh, to um, see if they would be willing, we would be willing to sponsor mm -hmm. and host the grand opening of the State Park. And before we said yes, we went back and had to take a look at what our duties and responsibilities were in the Beach Commission. We reviewed that and we then put together a document which we then submitted not only to DREAD but because there was going to be money involved in terms of donations, we submitted that report in to the st uh, State Treasurer. We also then met with the State Treasurer and officials of DREAD to say, if you want us to do this, do we have the power uh, to do it? And um, it was decided 
that we did. And it was very clear in some of the aspects of the master plan that we were able to do that in the area of promote, promoting um, the recreational area of Hampton Beach. The Beach Commission then established a committee outside of just the commissioners, <coughs> but members of both private and the public sector, and also business owners. And we indicated that we would like to have this gala, and we were going to need uh, donations from businesses. Those businesses came forth surprisingly in, 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 in great force. As we raised the money, it was intended to go to the gala, <coughs> but also very specifically shared with every particular donor that any money that if left over would go to the improvement of Hampton Beach and any other types of improvement projects that the Beach Commission deemed necessary. We raised close to $65,000. Those of you that remember that rainy, stormy, windy weekend, uh, we had to cancel a lot of the activities on Saturday. However, with the cooperation of the Hampton Beach Village District, a lot of those activities that were planned for that day were then weaved in throughout the summer by the uh, Village District. We spent, out of the 65000 we spent probably, and I don't have the ac actual numbers, but roughly, we spent about $45,000 giving us a little over $20,000 left mm -hmm. of money unspent. Mm -hmm. That money was then deposited into the Hampton Beach Master Fund, which is an account that is established within DREAD, which was established by the uh, state treasurer for funds to be used for, ma for the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Yeah. And if I may, um, just quote section 216J colon 4 the commission is authorized to institute a program to solicit and receive any gifts grants or donations made for the implementation of the master plan development to deposit such grant uh, to, to deposit such gifts grants and donations in the Hampton Beach master plan we also under 216-J colon 5 we are able to take such funds and at the disposal of the Hampton Beach Area Commission use those funds for implementation expenses, the expenses of the commission, its commissioners and any employees of the commissioners shall be paid from such fund. Mm -hmm. And that is 216-J uh, colon 5. Um, and if I, if as I said, the only expenditure to date, we have had two expenditures to date since the gala. Mm -hmm. One is the trash barrels, in which we paid the town of Hampton uh, to help support additional trash uh, containers at the beach. Mm -hmm. And then the second is a expense by the commission where we have a secretary mm -hmm. who we pay through the town for taking minutes of, of our meeting. So, okay. th so that's the spending of the gala. Okay. A couple, couple more of other questions, and if we could keep the answers maybe a little more brief. 91A, who gave you, what attorney gave you, uh, your committee, the advice that you could get guidance on 91A behind closed doors? The gentleman who was our attorney at the Attorney General's office. Who is that? Oh, well, that's an unusual for, for counsel, I would think to explain to a body that is, well, you're not elected officials, but you're certainly uh, in the public eye and serving the public uh, good, I would think. So I rather wonder uh, what individual, and I think they should be named, is giving advice to a committee such as yours that you can go behind closed doors to uh, find out uh, about the right to know law. Well. Madam Let's not beat it around all night, but I no. just I, I think and, and I understand that and the public but, has a right to know. But, but and and I and I truly believe that. And and at one of our public meetings, we had a uh, uh, a citizen uh, resident of yes, Hampton. Yes, I saw that. I am well and aware. 
I <laughs> then did go back to the Attorney General's mm -hmm. office and ask, um, and it was defined as that each commission that has been established by the state mm -hmm. has an attorney within the Attorney General's office that is assigned to that commission mm -hmm. to represent mm -hmm. the legal components mm -hmm. of that commission. So apparently it was it was a decision. It was a decision by that legal counsel that he would like to talk with the commissioners about giving us advice about the right to know. I went back to him and I said, "Well, okay, if we have to do that, I still feel obligated to provide some type of opportunity for the town of Hampton and all commissions, all committees." to have an understanding of the right to know. And he said, well, you can do what you want to do uh, about an educational seminar on the right to know. Just don't do it in public. No. He said, we can do it in public. Mm -hmm. So what I have done, and I didn't have to do this, but what I have done is I've contacted uh, the commissioners, the Beach Commission, and they are willing to support a public seminar I checked with Chuck Rage, the chairman of the Hampton Beach Village District, to conduct a public seminar. Yeah. And I have a phone call out to Gerald after advice of Mike Schwarzer saying that if the three organizations, the town, mm -hmm. the Village District, and the Beach Commission, would financially support a consultant who is already a vendor with the town of Hampton, uh, and Mr. Welch, please help me out with his name. The gentleman up in Portsmouth, the attorney, uh, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Upton. Yes, mm -hmm. he has. Um, <coughs> we have had a conversation with him, yeah. and bottom line is that if we can get the town, the village district, and the beach commission to support, we will then have a right to know seminar for any organization, the planning, the zoning, the board of selectmen, the village district any organization within the town of Hampton that wants to know about the right to know. Aren't we getting a little convoluted here? The focus was on what was going to be presented to to you as a commission. And by the way, of course, the commission is really pretty much out of the, out of local control, obviously. The, the state has a hand in it. I wonder many days when I wake up what the hell is going on in Concord. Um, Ocean Boulevard, uh, I hope that when the um, <coughs> when and if there is ever money available through the federal government, and I'm not holding my breath, that that will include maintenance of the sidewalks that are owned by the state of New Hampshire on Ocean Boulevard. I'm just throwing that out for thought because uh, I never want to see this town take over the responsibility of those sidewalks. Uh, building and design codes I had the privilege of serving with the planning board last year as the selectman representative, and I had a little closer insight into what's going on there. Is the Hampton Beach Area Commission really enthusiastic and satisfied uh, with the quality of architectural design that's being proposed down at that beach? The state of New Hampshire has a 1A and 1B bypass committee trying to encourage local um, ambiance, make everything look like New England, attract tourists to that 1A, 1B corridor, which of course is, is the jewel of, of the seacoast. And uh, I saw a uh, design recently for one of the approved projects that looked like the building could be lifted up from Miami Beach by a helicopter and dumped up here. I'm not seeing any, uh, if you, if the master plan uh, guidance that you guys are following uh, encourages uh, design that's favorable for New England and favorable for the local uh, feeling. I'm not seeing it, so I don't know what's happening there. And I don't necessarily need a, a long uh, dissertation, but I think I see uh, some, some substantial problems. And one of the DOT, for my last comment, uh, you're talking about transportation in the DOT. Where? 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 <coughs> the allowance being made for parking at that beach. I had one beach resident 
that bumped into me a couple of weeks ago who said we're going to look like Revere Beach and we're not going to need parking because it's going to be condos from elbow to elbow and nobody's going to make any provision for parking and the whole beach as we have known it in the past is basically going down the rabbit hole and I tend to agree with him. That may not be a very happy thought but I'm not impressed with what I'm seeing going on there and it would seem to me that your, your responsibilities as a commission uh, concerning that master plan should be giving us something more amenable, more local, more contoured to, to the Hampton area instead of looking like cookie, cookie cutter messes with blind windows on them and, and all of the other uh, approaches that are being taken down there. I can only speak for myself as one member of this board but I am massively unimpressed with what I'm seeing going on down there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Sir. <coughs> yes. Um, <coughs> I would like to say that uh, w there wouldn't have been the money if John and others did not go out and solicit the funding. There was no state money contributed, I don't believe, <coughs> or town money. So all of this money that's being discussed was all solicited and wouldn't have even been there if John and other members of the board didn't go out and get it. <coughs> the money uh, was a benefit to both everyone in the state, all the town residents, and any visitors to Hampton. I think all of the questions that you were really asked <coughs> this evening were probably answered during the meetings that we have or discussed. Isn't that right, John? That's correct. And, you know, so the, none of this, whether it was for the right to know or the money or what happened to the money or how it was all discussed, if you watch the meetings that have happened, all of these things, the answers are all there. <coughs> and, <coughs> I'd like to say that what's happening at the beach and the biggest thing that's going to affect it in the future has been really what the public voted for, which was the higher height limits. Myself, <coughs> I actually did not vote for that, but I think overwhelmingly the town did. And I know as a resident of Ocean Boulevard for the last 50 years, everyone that lives at the beach is very excited about what's happening. Finally, we've <coughs> waited a long time for things to happen, <coughs> particularly with the um, the recession and whatever. It kept um, construction and properties that needed to be rehabilitated back. So a lot of things are starting to happen now, and I think almost everyone that lives at the beach have never been happier and you know, they're fully behind what's happening down there. Thank you, John, for the good job that you do. Thank you. <coughs> Selectman Bridal, please, sir. <coughs> yes, John. Part of the transportation part, doesn't that have to do with the parking and stuff, too? It's so yeah. that, I mean, you're, got, you're looking into <coughs> alternative parking. In a, in a great example of that, Selectman Bridal, is um, one of the things that we've talked about is, and, and we've gone and we've actually done a study two years ago, a parking study. And, and, th and that parking study basically said that um, there is spaces down on the busiest day of a summer uh, month. There are spaces. It's just a matter of where they are. And so <laughs> signage is, is one that um, is going to be important to us as we look at, at, at the transportation <coughs> study. Um, there's a number of areas in, in the master plan that references transportation. And I think it's... it's important for us to take a look at all of the transportation issues around which includes parking which includes signage which includes traffic control um, and traffic flow so yes this whole study will be able to provide a uh, a new insight on what's happening uh, down at the beach uh, regarding transportation and the other areas related to transportation so it would also include areas like, I'm not going to say people movers, but I know the state park is underutilized as far as parking has been for years. Mm 
uh, but allowing pe some sort of transportation for them down to the main part of the beach and, and vice versa and that. Yep. I thought I had heard that was part of what that study yep. was looking at. And, and there's been some discussion about uh, even, you know, and we're far away from this, but there's, I mean, if we don't look towards the future, then um, we're not doing our jobs. Um, but the uh, 101 Route 1 uh, Intermodal Transportation Center, and it's more and more discussion in terms of it would be difficult to move tourists in a public <coughs> transportation mode from there to the beach, but it wouldn't be for employees that worked on the beach that take an awful lot of car spaces and spend an awful lot of money as employees at spaces on the beach to where if we could provide a remote parking area for the employees and getting them back and forth, it would save them money and create more parking spaces for our residents and tourists. Thank you. Selectman Waddell, please, sir. Thank you for your report. It's good. I think, you know, as long as you're checking with legal counsel, you're checking with the state, you're staying <coughs> under the RSAs, I don't see any problem with that. I think that's good. I think the, the transportation thing is great, and I'm going to respectfully disagree with my seatmate here and say that I think that the beach has come up tremendously. I think what the state has done, I think the new bathhouses, I think the flags, I think the seashell, and I think some of the development, although it may not be New England specifically, I don't see it as an eyesore at all. I see it as, as, as a positive, and I think the beach has come up since I've been here. I think it has come up, and I think it's got a lot. It's going <coughs> to continue to, and I think you guys are doing a good job. Thank you, sir. Mr. Welch, anything for the commissioner? No, thanks, sir. How was the pie, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> <laughs> the pie. It was absolutely <laughs> delicious, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're you're uh, you're an extraordinary pie eater, and uh, you've you've made yourself uh, through all of your your hard effort and your intelligent effort and your skillful effort uh, indispensable to the community, and you're that uh, strong link uh, between that uh, that strip of beach, which is second to none anywhere in the world. Uh, in, in this community, and you've made it one community, and the Hampton Beach Area Commission and the Hampton Beach Villa District uh, are comprised of extraordinary people, and there is a, a significant amount of development down there, and this is a, a free country, and it's a free town, and there's a process by which this development occurs, and uh, far be it from me to pass judgment on our sister boards and those that put their capital at risk that developed down there, and I think the beach looks beautiful. Uh, I think it's fantastic that you're giving the... Uh, uh, the master plan a good scrub. It's getting a little long in the tooth, and uh, I'm sure you're going to do some really exciting work with that. So thank you for that. And finally, uh, uh, I'll come under um, full business, a point of order on this um, questioning from other boards to the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Moody had some questions. There's some emails with the, uh, the folks that, that uh, invest money, and uh, I'm going to respond to that. We don't respond in public comment. But your meetings are all posted. Yes, they are. They're open to the public. Yes, they are. And you have answered uh, those questions that uh, you answered tonight previously? Yes. And were you warned that those questions would be asked tonight? No, I was not. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a great Can night. I just say Chairman. one more thing? Well, well, okay. We've yeah. got more. Yes, sir. I'd like to say, too, that um, we really owe a thanks to the community of Hampton for voting in the $12 million that they voted to fix the sidewalks mm -hmm. and do the sewers mm -hmm. and to make possible all the work that's being done down there. That was all done with the support of the taxpayers, and the taxpayers are reaping the benefits of seeing what's happening now, and that's why we have to look at that they voted for those 80 foot and They've <coughs> give you, given, the, given us a mandate. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Woodard. I just want to very quickly, your pie was great, but you shouldn't have harassed that poor young boy. <laughs> <laughs> that was uncalled for. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Appreciate it. Roman 5, number 4, Stephen Riker, Sandpiper Environmental Services. 1042 Ocean Boulevard, Seawall. <laughs> Mr. Welch, please, sir. If I can, sir, could I have uh, Deputy Director... Uh, Jacob's come up here and sit with us in the Yes. Sort of our resident expert on the uh, area on the North Beach. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Steve Riker from Sandpiper Environmental Services. I'm joined tonight <coughs> by Mark Asick, property owner at 1042 um, Ocean Boulevard, Hampton. Um, what, what you have in front of you tonight is a is a, an application for permission to um, repair 
a stone revetment that is located on Mr. Gasek's property. Um, I want to provide the board with just a little bit of a background of, of why we're here tonight and how we ended up here um, again um, in regards to the seawall. Um, back in April of 2013, myself, um, the project team, which includes uh, uh, the civil engineer, an architect, put together some plans for, for Mr. Gasek to redevelop his property. The redevelopment included um, basically a teardown and a rebuild of, of the existing structure on the property. And during that time, I advised, I advised Mark that you know, you're, you're spending money on your house here. You should, you should probably also rebuild your seawall because it was clearly wasn't functioning correctly at the time. There were a lot of rocks tossed landward of the seawall. The property next door had some glass broken from, from things being tossed um, over the seawall. Um, and, and Mark agreed with me and, and hired an engineer to uh, design the seawall, a new seawall. Um, Altus Engineering of, of Portsmouth, uh, Eric Weinrib, the professional engineer there, he, he did a seawall design and that was part of our original application in April of 2013. In May of 2013, we went to the planning board and, and received uh, approval for um, the entire project, including the seawall. And then in May of 2013, where we're here, we were here in front of the selectmen um, and got approval to um, access town property to to basically rebuild the seawall. Um, after the seawall was built, Ray Ann Dion, the conservation coordinator for the town of Hampton, brought it to my attention that she didn't think that the seawall was built as it was designed. Um, I went and looked at the seawall, and she was absolutely correct. Um, in some discussions with her. Um, she told me that an amended special permit would be required um, to either retain the seawall as is or retain or or to um, make any changes to that seawall. In the meantime, we we went and looked at the seawall. We tried to assess um, what changes we could make to it. Um, the project um, team um, really took a close look at how we could change the seawall to make it more like it was designed. Um, Mark hired Duncan Meller of Waterfront Engineers LLC out of Stratum. He's kind of a seawall expert, so to speak, in the area. Duncan came, he looked at the wall, he suggested some changes. Those changes included um, to rework some of the stone that's within the revetment, um, to bring the revetment into conformance with the Altus engineering plans, um, and specifications including the stone size, uh, the shape, the configuration, and the slope. Um, I want to add that the wall that is there now is shown on this as-built plan um, that you should have a copy of. Um, the wall that's there now is actually within the <coughs> height, width, and, and distance of extension onto the beach. It's within all those, those specifications. It just doesn't look exactly like the wall that was originally approved. Um, so with Duncan's uh, advice, um, mainly his advice was replacing some of the smaller stones with some larger stones and reconfiguring some stones so that the wall would have a similar slope as originally designed. Um, we um, submitted uh, an appended app uh, amended application to the town of Hampton for the for reworking of the seawall on October 2013. On December 2013, we received planning board approval, and tonight we are asking for selectman approval to access town property and use town property for repairs of this <coughs> stone revetment. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Specifically, what needs to be repaired? Uh, mainly, it's <coughs> removal of some smaller rocks, replacing them with larger rocks, and reconfiguring some rocks so that it has the slope that was shown on the original design. So the slope is key in, in absorbing the wave energy. Obviously. So it's too, it's too steep right now. <coughs> yeah, you don't want too steep. You'll end up with some problems, I understand. Correct. Yep. Is there an electrical fitting in that wall? Um, there was, and it has been removed. It has there been. is a piece of conduit that was there that the wire did run through. Okay. The conduit remains. The wire was removed. No, the wire was never there. Wire was never there? No. Okay. Just the conduit. Okay. Is the conduit detachable someplace? So um, it can't be. It can't be. Yeah, uh, I think all you have to do is uh, lift the rock a little bit and pull it out. Yeah, I think that probably would be a very good thing to do, just so there's no question later on that somebody doesn't 
feeder wire down through it. Correct. We yep. obviously don't want a problem. That's, that's pretty significant having electricity near uh, a water source. Uh, it could be a, a rousing day for the person who got too close. <laughs> so um, when you access the beach, I, we take it you're going to access down through Billy Joe Ground Park. Is that, the, is that the access off ancient highway? Yes, and that's in my transmittal letter in your application. Okay. Yep. Uh, we need to know when, where, how, why uh, you're going to submit, you're going to tra transmit into that, or transfer, transport into that property. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been told that the work would probably take just one day. So it would be uh, one excavator, one truck bringing some larger stone in. Excavator would access the beach off ancient highway. Um, uh, move down the beach to Mr. Gasek's property, perform the work on the wall, and retreat from the beach in the same day during low tide. Okay, so that's a one-day project, basically. So it's a one-day, that's what I've been told, yes. Okay. Um, I, I've designated in the application a full week to kind of give the contractor a window to <coughs> work within. But as far as doing the actual physical work we're looking we at. We obviously would like to know when he's going to be there. And we could certainly let the town know if He's not going to park his equipment at the park overnight or anything like that. Nature. Correct. Okay. All that's going to be gone. Be there in the morning. Be gone in the afternoon, basically. Yeah. Okay. Like the, obviously, we we need to pick a day that's right. low tide as well. And and uh, you've seen the uh, the lease that's required in order to be on town property. Yep. And that should be in your application package as well. Mr. Gasek has signed that. There are, okay. there's some some blanks in there that I think need to be filled out I think by the, the town. I think the becomes effective, yeah, with the selection approval. Sure, yep. Uh, which probably won't be until next next Monday night, but uh, I can guarantee you it'll be on the docket for next Monday night for approval. Okay. Um, is there anything else we should know about the construction or what's going to happen or uh, any of the requirements for the lease? So they're all, good, they're all obviously all going to be followed. Yep. Um, is there anything else we should know besides that? Not that I'm aware of. Thank you. Would you please introduce Mr. Jacobs? Mr. Jacobs is our Deputy Director of Public Works and considered our current resident uh, expert on the North Beach. Uh, having been up there on so many occasions now, I think he's actually got a hovel built in some of the walls to, <laughs> to shield him from the bad weather. A man, um, a man cave? Uh, something like that, yeah. He's, he's, he's been up there on so many missions now, he's it's almost a permanent fixture. So yeah. I'll yield to him. Thanks. Um, I applaud your enthusiasm to think that it's going to get done in one day, but reasonably I don't think it can get done in one day. Um, because it, it comes down to, A, the tide schedule, but yes. secondly, um, you know, Mr. Welch asked you if, you know, you're going to need to store equipment in Billy Joan Brown Park or First of all, if he's going to be bringing in stone, larger stone, which you said they need, where is he going to put the stone? And when he gets ready to unload the stone, um, you're going to bring it down there with a, a stone truck and, you know, or are you going to carry one stone at a time down there with the, with the excavator? That's how I understand it, yes. It would, they would be carried one at a time. You... Mm. There's, I'm not sure there's, any, is there any other way to do it? The last time they did it, um, there is a, um, <coughs> the, what would be the, let's see, the northern section of Place Cove Beach, mm -hmm. no sorry, the southern section of Place Cove Beach, uh, has a section in it that was, um, it took a lot of uh, storm damage last year. And uh, I can remember being there this last night and Dave, my wife's, uh, our wedding anniversary, I was still there at 5 o'clock at night trying to tell my wife, no, it was, it'll all get buttoned up, I'll be home for dinner. <laughs> um, it, it isn't that easy. It didn't sure. work out that way. To get the stone truck down there with the amount of stone that you're looking to get, um, you're going to have to basically disassemble right there at Place Cove, that, that section, to be able to drive up and over it. Or you're going to have to add a lot more stone to it to make it drivable. Yeah. Right now you could drive it in a track vehicle, the excavator, not a problem. But I don't see how you're going to get that amount of stone down there. Yeah. Then the other problem I ran into was um, if it's warm like it was Saturday, you can't stop 
500 people from coming to the beach. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they had a problem with your equipment's in the way of that, and they were really teed off when they had to get up because the excavator's coming yeah. down the beach. Yeah. Um, that prompted a number of phone calls, um, prompted some direction from others that I go down there and almost intimately supervise it uh, to make sure that everybody's needs were, t were addressed. I did look at the, the photos. I totally agree with your assessment that it, it is really too steep. I totally agree with the uh, comments made by the chairman of the Conservation Commission. When the storm surge hits that in front of your property, the way it's built now, it's going to shoot right up into your first floor and second floor windows. It's going to take it out. Um, I've seen it move stones the size of this desk yes. back 50 and 60 feet. Yeah. Just utterly amazing, the amount of storm damage, uh, the, the power of the... So, in other words, I'm in support of what you want to do. You need to make it out longer. You need to put in bigger stones. You need something to diffuse the energy. But to do it, it's not a one-day plan. Mm -hmm. So I tend to think you need to... You talked about it's Merrill excavating. It's in the application, or they did the first no, work. No, no, it's uh, Dave... Um Steve McNeil? McNeil. McNeil, sorry. Um, I think you need to go back and talk it over with him. It's definitely going to take longer than a day. It's okay. going to take definitely <coughs> longer than one or two tide cycles. I wouldn't be surprised if you're there a whole week. It's just that, you know, it's like asking to paint a house, but you have to park a thousand feet away from the house and carry all the paint in by one quart buckets. You're not allowed gallons, and you know you're not right. allowed to park. So th there's some really operational issues of trying to access this site, and and so right. I'm in support of what Jay put in. That you know you've you've got to rework it. Um, it was nice work landscaping wise. I like the the, the stairs. They're not <coughs> per the original plan, but boy, when the storm hits them, mm. it's, it's going right up into your yard. And we're going to be back here next spring, if next winter we have a bad nor'easter, yeah. you're going to be requesting to do the same thing if it's not done right. <coughs> so I'd rather, if you're going to do it, let's do it once right, but I don't think, from what I've seen, we're quite ready yet. That's my assessment. What, what would be required to... Um, I think a construction schedule that mm, Mr. McNeil can live with. Okay. I don't... Yeah. I caution you from agreeing in front of this board to do it in one day because mm -hmm. we will hold you accountable for that. Yeah. And you will get shut down at the end of one day when you've only got stone down there on the beach and no way to get it in place. It's, uh, yeah, I, I hear where you're coming from. Just my understanding that we're not replacing all the stones in the wall and we're just replacing a few of the smaller ones. So, you know, I, I was told one day, so that's... I'm just conveying information, so... It's not like um, building with Lego blocks or Lincoln logs, I can tell you that. It's it's a case. Of so if we ask for a full week and we only use, we l we use less than that. Better off asking okay. <laughs> for a full week and using two right. or three days than telling us that you're going to do it in one day. Yeah. And well, this, I did put a full week in the application. This meeting is televised and everybody yeah. Yeah. at home is watching this and sure. they're they're going to say to themselves, yeah. when we were there last year, they didn't see anybody get it done in one day. Mm -hmm. It was it's. It's I tough would, work. I would suggest that you give us a detailed construction schedule yeah. with a day timeline so that we know exactly what's going on. We're not against giving you a week. That's sure. not the point. Yep. Right. The point is that we'd like to know what's going Which on days? because we have 19 other applications up on that end of the beach that we mm -hmm. have to address as well. Mm -hmm. So we don't want 19 pieces of equipment going by each other trying to get yeah. the job done. We'd like to stagger them out so it gets done effectively. Mm -hmm. And we want you to do it right so you don't have a problem later on. I'll verify the fact that uh, I've seen a boulder at least half the size of this table sitting on Route 1A. And that was during a minor storm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it doesn't take very much to throw those right up to your house. So you need to be careful of what you're doing. Yep. Sure. So if you get a set construction schedule, what we'll do is we'll stop preparing the requirements and uh, as soon as you get that information into us, we can run it through Public Works and back to the board for approval, and uh, we'll get it out of here. Okay.
Thank you, sir. And, and just before we go to the board, if, if I may, um, <coughs> we're going to discuss um, in detail any of the uh, discrepancies from uh, the chairman's letter of the Conservation Committee. Well, this is uh, <coughs> reference to. Yeah, you have the same And have you seen that letter from the? I have. Yep. Oh. April 11th from uh, Jay Diner, the uh, Conservation Commission chairman. Um, he questions his first bullet point is that, that it is a dangerous precedent for the town when a project is not built according to pl mm -hmm. approved plan and requests for modifications are not submitted before the work is done. That comment goes directly to my comment to you. If you are going to redo it one more time with a permit, I guess I'd rather have it done right once than twice wrong or twice halfway. Um, you know, when I was in your side of it, it seemed like we never had the money to do it right the first time, but we always found the money to do it the second time and sometimes <laughs> the third. So um, it's just, it goes with what we do. Um, so, you know, uh, Jay's was trying to caution the board. Um, there ought to be some accountability or responsibility to do it right and do it once. And, 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 and it, that goes back to, oh, I don't want to paint your contractor into a corner. I'd rather have him tell me what his work schedule is going to be. Okay. Uh, secondly, the, the rationale for leaving the stairs or the stop, having the stairs is curved. Uh, Jay states it very clearly. That event very clearly demonstrated to me, he's talking about a storm earlier this summer, uh, Early last December, there was a snowstorm accompanied by a storm surge at high tide. It was on Ocean Boulevard, North Beach at the time. The event clearly demonstrated to me that when there is a storm surge, the water will follow any pathway, and the orientation of that pathway is not of consequence. I would totally agree with him. It's just I've seen what it does to the granite boulders we put down there and the boulders mm -hmm. we've got. They're going to go where they want to go. It's Mother Nature at its strongest. Uh, the only other thing I think is stronger is ice moving when that storm surge comes in. Um, it's, it's almost deadly. Um, so those were the two major points that he wanted to make. Um, and this, his third point, but it wasn't a bullet point, was about the uh, electrical conduit. I would tend to agree that um, it will be the worst thing in the world to have um, a storm ruin that electrical conduit if it did get electricity in it and then to see a bunch of kids mm -hmm. scamper over the rocks and have one of them grab it. Um, yeah. We have enough issues, human life issues at the beach as it is with surge, tide surge and rip tides that we don't need something else like that. And where it's on, it's extending on town property, I can understand why they don't want it that way. So. Thank you. And if I may, just before we go to the board, I, I just wanted to uh, extend uh, Mr. Jacobs' remarks on the April 11th letter from the Conservation Commission Chairman and that the uh, reason for the submission is the revetment that was built does not match the plan that was originally approved by the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. Mm -hmm. So I s specifically want to drill down on that so there's no, we, we expose all of any perceived or asserted flaws or discrepancies. So. Mm -hmm. Like we'll say the floor yeah, I, I agree with Mr. Diener's comments and uh, there's no sense in having a planning board and going before a planning board if you have a, a plan approved at the planning board and then you uh, basically construct what you want. I'm looking at August 23rd here and then I'm looking at uh, August 30th. What, what am I to take from these two plans? What's the, uh, and of course, <coughs> the curved stairway uh, is unacceptable. Basically, it will cause you a heck of a lot of trouble. But that's what's on the August 30th. Why? Why do we have these two? What am I to deduce from these plans? The as-built plan was prepared <coughs> to show that we were within the original dimensional specifications of of the old wall, so that we didn't extend further onto the beach. We weren't higher than we said we were going to be. Is that the August uh, 30th one? Correct. Yep, the one in your hand. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, still that's got the, the curved built. stairway in it. That's what, was built. Yep. Mm -hmm. that's what was built. That's yes, what was built. Yes, I know. Yep. And that's what's protruding out onto public land. Of course, the whole thing is onto <coughs> public land. And on that same plan, you'll notice that on the north side of the top side of that plan, yeah. the, the original design was there's a uh, straight stairway to the south side of your 
project, but it actually shows on the top of your plan, mm -hmm. that the original design was to carry that out there. Now you're a lot shorter, mm -hmm. and that's why I feel that you can't get it done in one day. To put in more mm -hmm. stone, yeah. to get it, to seat it there at the base, you're going to actually end up taking out a couple of top pieces, mm -hmm. sliding it in, and then chinking or wedging in yeah. the top pieces. But there again, yeah. given the size of the excavator it's going to take and, and yeah. the thumb control that the operator is going to need to use, it's it's not Lego blocks. It's no, I think you're right. That's and what are, one of the revetments that is going up over there, I recall, has north-south stairs. Mm -hmm. They're not curved. Mm -hmm. They're not east-west. One is a north-south stairway, which may be the smartest way to put something like that together. Actually, it doesn't make an awful lot of difference when you get a power surge. The ocean, will, come right the up ocean will get it anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would like to see when the planning board approves something, and I don't always agree with the planning board, but I sat uh, as the selectman representative on the planning board when this was brought in, and I'm not happy that uh, the, the plan was basically ignored, and it's caused a lot of trouble for everyone, including yourselves. Any further comments, Selectman Wilson? No, thank you, Selectman sir. Selectman Griffin, please, sir. Yes, I'm not clear from listening um, if you are going to make the corrections with what the Planning Board <coughs> and the Conservation <coughs> Commission suggested. Because I'm in favor also of the Planning Board, uh, what, what they okayed. Um, I would like to see that happen also. And I will tell you that just before I left, and I think we have an email here tonight um, from Karen Theodorus, a director butter. Mm -hmm. uh, she sent an email tonight at uh, 510, and she's uh, at the Dorian, and she yeah. is opposed to this. Mm -hmm. And there have been a lot of issues that have happened in the past to the Dorian. So uh, mm -hmm. I think that she's certainly viewed a lot of bad things in the past. So I'm all for mm -hmm. following what the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission has recommended. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Selectman Bright, please, sir. Yes, thank you. I, I, I have a tendency to agree with what Chris has to say. Is that This is obviously looks like it's going to be more than a one-day plan. Oh, yeah. Do we have any provisions, if we have some good weather, to have any detail there for um, because you will have people on the beach, you'll have people parking in that area. Uh, do we have any provisions of having a detail? Not as yet, but we can we can order it, obviously. Okay, that that would be my concern. Is if if we get a nice day, you're going to get a lot of people on the beach, and I'd like to at least have somebody that's got a little law and order in it. So. You're going to be cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we that's had great difficulty last year with people running up and down the beach with right. excavators. Do we need to come back to give you a schedule, or can we call into the selectman's office or the town manager's office and? You just hold that uh, comment just one second, please, sir. And that was my own. That was there was my that, let, me, let me get to selectman Woodell. Thank I'm you. Set. You set? Okay. Now your question, sir. Okay. My question is: Do we need to come back to in front of the sport, or can we call the town manager's office and give them a schedule? We need something detailed in writing. Okay. Okay. Some, but Not does something it, over the telephone. But can it be to writing. your office versus coming back here? It doesn't have here. to be date specific, but it has to be duration specific. Sure. Right. The reason why I say that is because it's my understanding as of last year you had changed the rules saying that yeah. nobody is committed on the beach with heavy equipment from May 15th to September 15th. That's correct. So we're approaching mm -hmm. May. Quickly, yeah. We've got tides to work with. We've got yeah. contractors, other yeah. commitments. Right. And, and 19 other applicants. And, <laughs> and rather than coming and using your time up again as a board, if we can do this, you know, because we'll lose another week if we have to come back, let's say, m next Monday with it. As long as it meets the board's requirements, the information received, We'll complete the plans, we'll complete the, the, uh, the, the documents and give them to the board for their review. If they're willing to sign them, you don't have to come back. If any of the board members raises an issue, you'll be rescheduled. How are we going to be assured that it's being done the way that the planning board wants? They'll have to complete an as-built plan when this is done. If it's not, the permit to have the seawall will be revoked, which means it's got to be removed. Yeah, I agree with Rick on that. That has to the plan, not just the construction. The schedule. question is, and I think the question is directed to 
the original seawall that was built that was approved by the planning board. Is that correct, Rick? Mm hmm. Okay. So the question is should that be put back in? And we haven't debated that yet. Mm -hmm. um, and this seawall removed or, or restructured, so it looks like that. Or whether this seawall, as, as it currently is built and wants to be repaired, can stay. And I think that's the issue. I think that's the issue you just addressed. Okay, so maybe the board should address that issue because if it's going to be <coughs> the one that was approved by the Conservation Commission, then there's a major reconstruction to do here. Well, the, the Conservation Commission didn't approve it. Okay. Conservation and Planning Board did. They gave you a special permit. I don't, to I don't, I don't, believe, I don't believe Conservation Commission recommended approval. Planning, the Planning Board did approve it, but without without the commission's uh, the Conservation Commission approve recommendation. What? Uh, let me kind well, of develop a, a consensus, and we can we can talk for another hour on this tonight. Sure. Mr. Gasek, uh, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful property, and there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, with the shoreline. And, and uh, uh, our congratulations to you for for uh, the stewardship and ownership of that. There's been some uh, points raised by board members, by the chairman of the conservation commission. There's an assertion that the plan doesn't meet what the planning board approved. Mm -hmm. So I think what the, this board and its, its rightful duties will, will uh, uh, assert and demand is that your project is the project that the planning board approved. And then you, there's some nuance here that the Conservation Commission did not approve the plan. Mr. Welch says they did. The chairman says that they did. So we'll, we're going to have to close that loop as well. So those are those two issues. And then once those hurdles are cleared, and this is the first of, of many that are coming, and it's important we get this one right. And right. once those two hurdles are, are, are approved, then we can get into the summer detail, the timing, the protection sure. of, of the paper. Mm -hmm. So that's it, and I would recommend that uh, you work with these folks here and that the board would have to get a chop from the planning board uh, that your project is good to go, a chop from the Conservation Commission that your project is good to go per their uh, prior approvals. Would the board agree that that's the way to go? Yeah, because I have no even no idea what what the planning board approved. Yeah, I sat on that planning. So we haven't I haven't seen it. And Mr. So. Griffin is the liaison, so he can he can spearhead that with their chair yeah. and get back with us. Good. Well, the only thing I'm confused with is I know we did uh, receive approval from the planning board and. I think what we're looking to do is just replace some of the smaller rocks with large rocks, not to rebuild the whole wall from scratch again, which is going to cost me a fortune, uh, which it already had. Uh, but I did bring in a engineer to look at it as a final, and he made his recommendations, and I'm going with his recommendations that some of these smaller rocks be replaced with larger, and the slope is changed a little bit. Uh, so we're not looking to create a whole lot more expense, but to correct some of the um, deficiencies that he had found. Correct. Wonderful. Well, as soon There's as... a planning board meeting um, on the 16th, I think, Wednesday night. No, it's been canceled. It's oh, canceled. It has been canceled? Yeah. It has been canceled. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. There was nothing on, nothing on the agenda, so they canceled it. The, okay. The planning board was approached for approval of a plan, which it gave, <coughs> and then that plan was thrown out the window, and the individuals, whoever they were, uh, created what they felt they wanted to create. And that's not going to work. Yeah, and, and I, I just want to kind of move away from, well, from we because I know because I haven't seen the planning board represent right. representation here tonight, yeah, and, and the it conservation should be they approved this last year. Let me, let me just finish, and then we're, we're gonna we're gonna res we'll, we'll move to reschedule for these folks, these good folks to come back in. The conservation chair says that the plan is not being adhered to. There's an assertion in the chairman's letter, the conservation committee, that the planning board's approval is not being adhered to. Correct. I don't have anything for or against that, so I couldn't vote for this. So those are the two hurdles. Then we can get into the drill down on mm -hmm. the items that we've talked timing security, mm -hmm. public safety. When would be a good time, what do you think, Mr. Welsh, that uh, they could uh, liaise with the two sister boards and uh, clear this we'll up? We'll do that this week. This week, so could we put this back on for next week? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that agreeable to everybody? I just wanted to say that, um, 
there's been so many things through <coughs> the years. You're not the first one. So many, many people have come and so many people have had problems. There was a major problem right beside you there mm -hmm. that yes. went on and on and on. So many different lawyers were uh, involved uh, and a lot of people were unhappy and probably is still unhappy with each other. So that's why it's important to make sure these things are done right. Mm. You're on for next week, gentlemen. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Roman 5, number 5, John Chagnon, Ambit Engineering, 1036 Ocean Boulevard. Sir. John Chagnon from Ambit Engineering, uh, representing Howard Elias, the property owner. Mm -hmm. Uh, who uh, apologizes that he can't be here tonight. Uh, he wants to uh, repair his revetment. It's in the same uh, neighborhood as the previous uh, issue you just dealt with. And uh, the contractor has put together a narrative for you uh, that was not available when we uh, submitted it in. But uh, it's kind of a chicken and an egg. The contractor was thinking that he couldn't do this until he got the lease, uh, but on your forms, uh, you need this information to kind of set up the lease. And uh, owing to the time, you don't want anybody on the beach um, um, after uh, May 15th. The contractor needed to get some specialized equipment, and you'll see on this that um, we've kind of put the work off until October 15th is because uh, the timing uh, didn't want to order the equipment and then not be able to deliver. They would like to try to get the work done, but May 15th is a hard deadline, uh, yeah. and they're probably going to have to wait. And I heard the previous applicant talk about September 15th. Is that uh, when you can start? Start date. Okay. <coughs> we would re uh, reflect that in this uh, final paperwork. Uh, because October 15th is pushing it to getting the work done before winter sets in. Mm -hmm. So if we can get there on the uh, 15th of September, that's probably what they'd like to do. Uh, there's a little map that shows the access. Uh, this contractor is, uh, is aware that what they'll need to do in order to get the trucks uh, is create a staging area, uh, create a ramp that they can ramp down to drive the uh, material from the ancient highway access place to the site uh, and they've yeah. indicated that the staging area uh, will be uh, restored uh, once the work is finished. Uh, they'll carry the uh, liability policies, uh, access off of the beach at Place Cove, take photographs of the area prior to the work. They'll be using a quarry truck to uh, bring the stone and drainage down the beach. They'll have a lay down uh, area which will be protected by construction mats and that's where they will park the excavator daily. They'll have a safety man on the ground for safe passage as it moves up and down the beach. Surround the staging area with protective fence and silt sock. They estimate it's going to take three to four men, approximately three to four weeks to do this work. Wow. Um, because you don't get a lot of time during the day in this location mm -hmm. between tides. So uh, some of that is due to the fact that uh, uh, can't work at night. So if the high tides are occurring in the middle of the day, it's going to take, uh, you're going to have to lay off a bit. And um, there'll be two visits by the engineer to make sure the work is going in accordance with the plan. And at the end of the project, they yeah. would have the uh, code enforcement officer inspect before they demobilize. So um, everything else should be in your package and um, including a uh, lease area exhibit showing the, the area that's proposed to be release. Hopefully you've got that. I don't know if you needed a meets and bounds description. I thought the plan would probably suffice, but if you need anything else, let us know. And if it's possible for this to be moved to the meeting next week, we appreciate that and hopefully we won't have to come back and 
bore you with details. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Chang. We'll go to Mr. Welsh. We'll go to Mr. Chang. And then we'll go to the board, sir. Can you tell us, you're, you're obviously going to be here for a period of time, and, and you're going to need to store this equipment somewhere. Are you planning to do that at the park? They would like to do that, yes. I don't, but, yeah. It's very important we know that. So that we can yeah. Bring security and, and, and provide uh, provide some space and location there for you to park the equipment. So. Mm -hmm. And the stone, I'm assuming they're going to bring that in as they need it and not store it in the park. Correct. Uh, they'll, they'll have a quarry truck that will bring the stone in as they need it. Uh, I mean, there might be some stone at the end of a work day that has to be fenced mm -hmm. off, you know, but uh, they certainly won't bring in all the rock at once. Mm. No, that's usually pretty cumbersome. Gets in the way after a while. Uh, you're going to store it on the beach itself? The rock? The rock? Yes. Yeah, okay. There's going to be some degree of, uh, of tear down to replace, so right. they'll have to they'll have to move rocks to the beach as they yeah. do that, and then rebuild. Yeah, you got to end a chink that we know, so it just doesn't work if you don't do that. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, you build it from the ground up. Okay. I don't really have any more questions, Jacobs. Um, it appears that Mr. Shagan, um, in his description of the work, is more um, in concert or being more realistic mm -hmm. to what it's actually going to take. Yeah. Uh, three to four weeks, uh, I, there's no problem with leaving the, the stone on the beach. It's it's not going to erode. It's not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I'd prefer to have it done after October 15th. Yeah. Or after, sorry, after, if you want to make it September 15th, if you want to amend your, and uh, uh, there'll be a lot less... Um, Interference. Interference. Um, uh, a lot of uh, children and families go back to school. Um, there'll be, you know, there'll still be a heavy weekend presence, but at the same time, um, it is a lot more reasonable time period of the year to work in. So I and and this is, I would say this is what I was looking for when I set a work plan from yeah. the from the prior applicant where. They literally know, point out where they're going to jump the wall into mm -hmm. the off of ancient highway, um, where they're going to go down the beach, how much area they're going to need, lay down area they're going to need in front of the beach, what they're, how they're going <coughs> to protect the work area. You know, th they've thought out the work plan, and it's far more realistic and plausible uh, than trying to. I, I would rather see the prior applicant. I don't. I guess I'd rather see more applicants at this time period yeah. than I would rush it in the spring. Because <coughs> if we rush it, we're going to miss something, or I can't get enough stone, I can't get the right I, excuses. Are going to lead to a poor quality job, and so. But I'd rather I I'm more in support of this approach and this project. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. Yeah, fine. I wonder what this area is going to look like 30 to 50 years from now as the ocean rises. That's just a thought. Slipping Griffin. What? Yeah. I think they got a good plan, and I like it better doing it in the fall than the spring. So. Yeah. Thank you. Slipping Griffin. Slipping Griffin. Yeah. Good. Sounds like we'll be seeing Chagman next week. Yeah. Sir. Good. So you, you, you would like somebody to appear uh, at your next meeting? And schedule you if you'd like to, yes. Yeah. Uh, you've given us all the information. We've just got to work it through. Mm -hmm. uh, you just need to give us a, a definite schedule start date, and we can work from there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So we'll be around September 15th. And my understanding, because I'm new to this process, I apologize, uh, that the final dates go in at the time you uh, go uh, through with the lease. Yes. So if we were going to wait till uh, September. Uh, should we? Uh, That's filled out by legal, and, and yep. they'll, they'll take care of that. Okay. Um, we just Did have to have the signed lease in advance so that we, we know. Your that we question was to wait till September. Not really, because there's be another not. part of the process, which is the building permit process that yeah. the um, mm -hmm. contractor needs to go through. So oh, they do it all at once. If we so can do this now and yeah, get this signed. Mm -hmm. uh, then we'll, we'll have our date and almost sort of uh, sink in our date being the 15th good. when the tides are good. And uh, the only thing I would say is that the contractor is going to be coordinating 
with a uh, recently approved project next door. So the, came, the same contractor is going to do two projects at the same time. So we might. Which recently approved project is this? It's uh, Mr. Cerullo, who is next door. Which is 10. Uh, let's see. This is 1036, 1032. 1032. Yeah, yeah. Just south of. Yeah, just south. The next. The next uh, property to the south, and they want to use the same contractor to save on mobilization. And they have to go through the same process. So. Correct. Yeah. 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 So we'll well, I'm saying they haven't come here yet. So. No, they haven't. Yeah. We're going to bring him through next. That's fine. Yeah. If one guy does it all, that's I think that's that's yeah. probably great with us because we're not dealing with 15 different <coughs> right. contractors. Right. So. Okay. John, whoever's last off the beach last year, we um, had them. Uh, that was that. Five o'clock on Friday afternoon session where we actually worked with them and said, "I want that stone there, this stone there." <coughs> so because I envision that the our ramp is going to take a beating mm -hmm. with this much work, and whoever's last off the beach will be forced to cooperate with the town to restore it. Restore it. Yeah. Okay. And it's not something mm -hmm. that we can say six by ten and three inches deep. It's literally that stone here, this stone there. No, you know which voids to fill that sort of thing. It may even be a situation where they put the ramp in and then other people use it and the last person is responsible to restore. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It's there in some fashion at this point, but not for a rock truck. For a tank, yes. A rock truck, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Unless it's a track rock truck. Marines, yes. Any further okay. questions? Oh. Uh, I don't think so. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Looks good. <coughs> Romans 6, approval of minutes, number one, March 31st, 2014. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Uh, have the minutes been reviewed by all parties? Yes, and I have one <laughs> correction if I can find the minutes. Can you pass that to the select one? In this forest of. I got it. I got uh, it. Okay. okay. Uh, sure not. Okay, great. Thank you. Page 7 of 7. Uh, and it says, on uh, other old business, uh, Selectman Wolsey, as Mr. Welch mentioned a few weeks back, the possibility of asking them to surrender a million dollars from the unreserved fund balance to help offset the tax rate. Spoke about when Mr. Welch came to the town in 2007, the cupboard was... The cupboard was B A R E, not B E A. <laughs> but but I did have to chuckle. So if you may have one correction. Duly noted. All those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. You're very creative, Fred. Oh, uh, I guess so. <laughs> I and also uh, move the approval of the minutes of April 12th, 2014, the non-public session. April 2nd. April 2nd, 2014, on public session. S moved by Slip Wolsey, seconded by. I'll second by I got one thing yes, I'd sir. like to. Uh, I just like inserted after Attorney Mullen and Scott Steele left that Selectman Bridal arrived at that time. Okay. I wasn't here for the whole thing because yeah. I was at a previous. Oh, actually, you're bringing up a good point, Rusty, because also that should have been a roll call vote at the beginning of those meetings. They should, the individuals should have been stipulated. Both duly noted. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Romans 7, Town Manager's Report. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, as I had announced last week, I just want to refresh everybody's mind that the Town Tax Collector's Office is going to be closed on Wednesday, April 16th. She has classes all day at the state. Uh, tomorrow is the last day to file for veterans, elderly, blind, and other exemptions or credits against your property tax. Please talk to the assessing office. Wednesday, April 9th, 2014, a contingent of Hampton officials attended a hearing on the Taylor River Bridge and Dam replacement meeting in Hampton Falls. Um, it was interesting, <laughs> and uh, to, to say the least, uh, they're going to divide the project into two pieces. My conclusion at the end of the hearing is they're going to take the dam out, try, try to avoid removing any of the material be behind it. Uh, that was just my conclusion. We'll see what really happens. Um, we are we prepared to. We're prepared to do whatever we have to do to protect the town. Thank you. Um, the new street sweeper is scheduled for delivery to the town on May 19th. Good. The new FEMA floodplain maps were received on April 10th. We're currently printing them out. Mm -hmm. The Old Church Street pump station is slated for demolition tomorrow morning. 
great. So the roof is already off and they're pulling the interior out now. It should be down tomorrow. All going to be filled in, Fred? Yeah, we thought about leaving the hole, but uh, <laughs> it was just too deep and too dangerous. So, <laughs> uh, The Department of Public Works will be with our telephone service on Friday the 18th. They have to replace an underground line that's been broken. Mm. Hazardous Waste Day is scheduled for May 17th, 8 to noon, at the old courthouse site on Winnicott Road. That's, oh, yes. One more thing. This I received uh, today uh, from the fire chief. Um, Glade Path. Um, a fire lane currently exists on the northerly side of the roadway from 101 to Bruce Street. Our fire code requires that fire department access roads shall have an unobstructed width of not less than 20 feet mm -hmm. and an unobstructed vertical clearance not less than 13 feet 6 inches. The roadway does not meet these width requirements. To provide adequate public safety response, this roadway should not be impeded by parked cars. Therefore, Glade Path has been designated as a fire lane with parking restrictions on the south side at a point beginning 370 feet west of the stop line at Route 101 to the beginning of the resident mooring parking. That's signed by the fire chief. That's it, sir. Thank you, sir. Questions for the town manager? Select my rules. Um, one, which I'm going to continue to ask, where are we on implementing the uh, sewer buy-in charge? Well, we were making a little bit of progress here, but um, unfortunately our town council decided he needed emergency surgery tomorrow, yeah. so um, it's holding us up a few days, but we're getting there. Um, his, his basic conclusion was don't do it until you have the material. But he's reviewing that. He's looking at it closely, and uh, I expect that next week I'll have a, sometime next week I'll have a response for you, depending on when he's able to come back to work. Because I would like to see us, if humanly possible, implement a temporary charge and then he adjust has, it he later. Understands. I, I know. I whine a lot. Selectman <laughs> <laughs> Griffin. Um. <coughs> Nothing. Thank you. Slip and bridle. You forgot to remind us that we have to have our dogs registered by the end of the month. April 30th. So I'm looking for the fines now. Well, <laughs> you know, you, I, I did mine today, so you're not going to get me, but I remembered after reading it, so I just want people to remember you have to have them done by the end of the month. We do. You're absolutely correct. Thank you, Mr. Bridle. Mr. Waddell. Set. Okay, wonderful. Uh, old Business, Roman 8, Old Business 1, uh, 478 Exeter Road, intent to cut wood or timber. So. Sir, uh, this has been bounced around from <coughs> you know where to you know where uh, for over a year. Uh, the applicants at the bottoms have filed an intent to cut. Uh, we have talked to the state. Our concern and the concern of the Conservation Commission is that more than half of their lot is wet. It's yes. wetland. Yes. And there is an ordinance protecting that wetland. Mm -hmm. However, the state doesn't recognize the ordinance for the purpose of timbering. What we have, we've, we've checked with the state, and um, if they had done this in the middle of winter, no precautions would have to be taken. But since they're going to do this during this time of the year, they're going to have to lay mats down to protect any erosion in the property. But the state is saying that they, we have to issue the intent to cut, or they will issue it within 30 days of the, of the filing, which was um, some time ago. It's almost run out. Um, and they'll be allowed to cut. That's wonderful. Your wonderful Department of Environmental Services. We're going to have the same problem there that we have with Stowcroft after actually, stripping that property. Actually, this is the Department of. Um, well, they're all in revenue. Each other. May, may, I, may I just a moment, Selectman Wolsey? Uh, are you are you done? Yes, sir. Okay, Selectman Wolsey, please. Yeah, that's outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. No more. Selectman Griffin. Selectman Bright. Do they have to live by our? By doing that, do they have to put the matting down and stuff? They have to put the matting down. That's what the State Department of uh, Environmental Services says. But and that's what DES but says. But our, what does our ordinance say about because of its wetland? They can't cut. Hmm. The so state will not enforce the ordinance. The trees are theirs. The trees belong to the state, not the property owner. And would, if they... If this intent to cut is issued, 
and it has to be within 30 days. Either denied by the selectman or issued. If it's denied by the selectman, the state can issue it. In fact, they could have started cutting the day they filed this, which, which was March 24th. That's disgusting. Okay. The state's only concern is that they can cut anywhere they want in wetland, provided they put the proper mats down for the equipment. And we have no recourse. I suppose we can sue the state. So we have no recourse. Basically. And they don't give one damn about what happens to that property after no. those trees are stripped. Well, this is going to be a sizable cut. That's terrible. May I uh, select a window? Yeah, no. Not, Wonderful. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Welch, uh, does our Conservation Commission uh, get a say in this? Have they uh, added their two cents? Uh, yeah, they don't want this issue. Okay, and and uh, having uh, that scheme and maneuver been overcome by reality, uh, uh, do they have any input now? They're as stumped as the rest of us. Uh, we have a valid ordinance that was passed under the state statute, and in this particular case, apparently, is not enforceable. Would it, Ms. Yes, sir. Would it be to our benefit to to deny, deny this and let the state go ahead and okay mm -hmm. it, and then we're living by our ordinance? I'll move to we deny. Could. I'll second. Yeah. Yeah. Vote. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Thank you. Let the state do it. Roman 8, number 2, revised cable TV intergovernmental agreement. Shall we or shall we wait until would you like to wait for council to return? I would yeah. like to wait for council yeah. to return. I, agree. I saw a an attorney in the office. I didn't know if um, <laughs> they were going to be She's wearing it because we have to have a, a meeting with the council after. The I meeting. didn't know yeah. if there was a couple of hats the young attorney was wearing. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Uh, Roman eight, old business selectman's designee for collective bargaining. Does the board have a pleasure, selectman Woolsey? I haven't got the time to, to volunteer to it. Select my Griffin. In the past, uh, we've used, I believe, Fred has been the designee, haven't you, Fred? Mr. Nichols. I get chopped no, out of that. It was Fred before Mr. Nichols. Well, yeah, but he's. If I remember correctly. He's been doing it for the last three years. Yeah, yeah but you did it before that. One year. Right. Yes. Yep. Um, and uh, so I question, would you be the best one, or pos is, would <coughs> either Wanda or Mark? I think Wanda has been involved in each of the collective bargaining sessions uh, be because she's responsible for HR at this point in time, okay? Um, we've been devolving the department heads for each of the departments mm -hmm. as they're needed. And we've been involving a selectman so that we could have a decision that could be related to the board in and, and, and a confidential session later on and not involve other employees. Yeah. So that's kind of the way it's been set up. If you want to restructure that, that's fine. I don't have a problem with attending, but I think you probably want to have a member of the board present if you can. I think that's important to have some board representation. You're going to set the basic underlying policy these negotiations are going to be for. So when is, when are the, uh, are most of these meetings going to be? Most of them are during the daytime. Most of them are during the daytime. Yeah. 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 I think that um, we need to have, I, I would suggest either Wanda or Mark, myself, unless Phil has more experience to do it. I don't know if it's something yeah, I don't see that, and t with Rusty being a member of the union, I don't know. I I'm re first of all, I'm retired nine years, but second of all, I wouldn't do it anyways because yeah. of that. Yeah, so I think that really uh, we need to have either you, Wanda, or Mark would be my suggestion. I, I, I don't think any of the three of us mind doing it. Okay. I think we maybe we should have Wanda do it because she might have something to learn there. Would be my suggestion. And she's been she's been attending all of the last several years. Yeah. More than mine. Uh, she's more than willing. May I have a motion, please? Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I have a comment. And then you're talking them. about individuals who do not reside in this community, and I have no prejudice against any of them. They're wonderful people, but there should be a member of this board prepared to stand by, and not do the direct negotiating, 
but certainly should be standing by to support council and to relay suggestions and options back and forth to this board. I think it's very unfair, number one, to have the responsibility like that put on Wanda's shoulders or anybody else's. Fred is overwhelmed at this point anyway. I, I hate to see him have any more responsibilities other than just as manager to, to make a few comments on, on the running of the departments. But I think that it should be a, a member of this board. And there are only two contracts up for negotiation this year, the two fire That's contracts. Right. Everyone else Correct. is settled for it. Selectman Woodall, comments? I agree. With? I agree with Mayor Louise Wilsey. I've got a year left. There's two contracts. I've discussed the, uh, the both the training schedule and the um, time commitment. I'm willing someone wants to make the motion. Fred's over. I'll make the motion for um, Selectman Bean to do it. I'll second. second. I'll second. Oh. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Would you say that again? I just though, would like to say to really right. <laughs> 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 <It's laughs> no, no. It's <laughs> my opinion that uh, the person that we have handling the negotiations, Matt Upton, does a fabulous job, mm -hmm. and I think he's responsible for all of the good things that have happened, uh, the vast majority of things that have happened in the past couple of years with the labor contracts. It's been under his tutelage or whatever you want to call it. And to be fair. To be fair, because we do need. I to said be what fair. I needed to say. Mr. Nichols, Mr. Nichols was very involved and devoted a huge amount of time. Moving on, all business. Selectman Woolsey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have nothing more than what's on there. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. No. Mr. Bright. Nothing at this time. Nothing. And I just wanted to, to uh, make a, it's, it's more of a point of order under all business. We heard from uh, the astute Mr. Moody uh, about uh, questions from a, uh, a, a fellow uh, commission. And um, immediately following his remarks a couple of weeks ago, um, Mr. Silbert sent an email, said he was surprised by the comments, and I'll, I'll read verbatim from okay. his, his email, and that uh, our next meeting is 21 April at 4 p.m. in the Selectman's Room. Our meetings are duly posted, and the public is always welcome to attend and ask any questions of the trustees. Mm -hmm. And he invites me and any board member and any public member. And uh, he says, Arthur doesn't have an email address, but he, apparently Mr. Silberdick thinks that Mr. Moody is aware of when the meetings are held and he can ask those questions in person. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, Mr. Silberdick has re um, suggested that Mr. Swartzer can give an income of the breakdown the town has received. He asserts that he thinks the town would be pleased with those results. Mr. Mackinson responded with data um, it's immediately subsequent to uh, Mr. Moody's uh, um, public comments under the public comment period. Uh, this evening we heard um, from uh, Mr. Pierce with his questions about another board. We asked Mr. Nye and I asked Mr. Nye if uh, his, his meetings are posted, if they're open to the public. And so we seem to get um, this, this comment in front of our board about other boards. And it's public comment. It's a free country. It's a free town, and we're we're happy to hear that. But I would I would think it would be uh, more astute, more prudent, more efficient, and more accurate for those that are interested in these boards to attend those and to uh, ask those uh, board members, those chair members, the questions in person at their meetings. And then if they're not, well, they can certainly email or pick up the phone. So I wanted to bring that up just as a point of order in a, in a, in a process. If we could kind of uh, move toward that, that would be great. If not, again, it's a free town. Uh, new business, Roman 9, non-union wage adjustments. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, the, um, <coughs> the, board, the prior Board of Selectmen had uh, placed in the budget uh, non-union wage adjustments in the amount of 1.25% for all non-union employees. I've given you a chart of those uh, for the Board's review and uh, approval, disapproval, or non-action, depending upon how you feel or what you wish to do. <coughs> Thank you. Selectman Wilson? Oh, just one comment, though. Because of... of um, some indes some indecisiveness or whatever uh, when uh, non-contractual raises are applied, we did make a uh, provision last year that I believe is part of the personnel policy that non-union wages would increases would be held to April 1st yes, uh, after the town elections and contracts are approved, et cetera. And this uh, action is in line with the, the new policy that was stipulated. That's correct. Thank yeah. you, ma'am. Sir. 
No comment. This doesn't reflect part-time employees, correct? This does not reflect part-time employees. Are we are we doing our employees not under the control of the board of selectmen? Mm, yeah. Okay. So do we do we do the same thing for them, or are we? That's up to the individual boards they report to. Planning. Um, most of our part-time employees. There's one part-time employee that is not a member of a union. All the rest are. Yeah. Okay. I was just I was thinking the. Like like I I had asked um, Diana Diane about the mm -hmm. um, the teachers and the program directors they have for her summer program. They're, That's about they are contained within her budget, and every okay. year we put an extra yeah. amount of money in there for them. Okay, so we get Thank them you. A small yeah. raise. That's, yeah, That's all and they're basically after. contract employees, right? Yep. Select Modell. All set. Okay, wonderful. Is there a motion from the board? Well, motion to accept. Second. Yeah. Second. Good. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. New business, Roman 9, High Street and Lafayette Road drainage project engineering contract amendment. Mr. Welch, please. Mr. Chairman, uh, the Department of Public Works is requesting that we execute an amendment uh, to CMA engineers in the amount of $11,000 to perform final design and bidding services for the downtown drainage project. That money is accounted for within the encumbrance being held for that mm -hmm. function. Yeah. It raises no new money. It doesn't spend any money out of the budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll so move that we authorize. A second. second. Further discussion? Unanimous. Okay. New business, Roman 9, number 3. Amend code of ordinance chapter 794, article 2, town lease parking spaces a. Add new section 794-13.1, colon amend section 794-14, colon amend appendix <laughs> 3 fees. Mr. Welch. It sounds like an awful lot, but it really doesn't mean an awful lot. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this, we had an inquiry as to whether or not we'd be willing to um, sell lease spaces to various agencies within the community early. We currently sell starting May 15th through October 15th of each year in the parking lots. Um, so we put together a proposal for those people who would like to, to have a separate period from March 15th to May 15th. March 15th is the end of the period mm -hmm. of time where on-street parking is banned. Yeah. So we're back to that. So, mm -hmm. um, And you know during the, the, the period where they're banned, if there is snow or whatever, mm -hmm. we allow everybody to park in the parking lots without fee. It's just the way it should be, so we got the streets cleared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This would require them, um, the fee would be uh, $147. Uh, it would go from uh, $735 for Ashworth to $845 if you want the extra period of time. Otherwise, you just purchase the $735 where the current fee is. And with Island Path, it would go from 700 to 803. We're using the same pro ratios figures. And for Church Street, from 300 to 345. Thank you. Selectman Wilson. Yeah, I, I have a problem with that, and I, I will rely on the manager or yourself for some of the math. What does this work out to, Fred, as a daily rate? What concerns me is this. If we're allowing someone to lease parking spaces, they are having the benefit of having an area segregated for their specific use. I don't think the per day cost, and I would like to see it done on a per day cost, should be any less than the per day cost we charge to Rusty if he comes to the beach and wants to park in a parking space. Now, I don't think we should be adjusting <coughs> this in a, as a lump sum for a certain segment of time. I think if anyone's going to lease any spaces in any of the town parking lots, there should be a per diem rate, period. The same thing that we're charging in season because they are having the exclusive use of those particular spaces. I, I don't think it's fair to the public. Let me, let me work the, okay. work, work, work okay. the board. Yeah. Yes, thank yeah. you, ma'am. Anything it. else? Thank you. Uh, Selectman Griffin. So what, I what is your suggestion, Fred, here? 
we don't have to do this. This was a right. request. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if a request we were, from who? Let me let me discuss that address. I received an unsolicited phone call on seven April from a Mr. Bandilla, who I do not know nor have I met, and I sent the email to Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch, per the reference, <coughs> Mr. Bandilla is interested in utilizing his parking lease for his customer parking needs prior to the current terms and time restrictions. Mm -hmm. It appears that there is a demand for <coughs> utilization by Mr. Bandilla and leaseholders similar to him as a result of entertainment dates, quote, moved up in the calendar year by the casino. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bandilla is copied on this email. It provides his telephone number. Please contact Mr. Bandilla directly to direct a response from you and or the appropriate department head. Kindly keep me informed. So Mr. Welch has gone in as a result of that and come up with this yeah. format, which I personally like. Mary Louise has some, some uh, uh, a, a what slight is beef Mr. with Mr. Bandilla's business? He owns a, a hotel, at the gra owner of the Greyhurst. The Greyhurst, oh, that's mm -hmm. what that was. So you're okay with this, Mr. Welch? I think it's an option for those who wish to use it. Uh, obviously, if the parking lot is open, we'll charge them with whatever that per diem rate is on that particular day. But you have to understand that as, as, as the, the summer moves along, those parking rates change. They don't stay the same. So you may start out early in the morning at $5 for a parking space, and by the time you get to noontime, when the parking spaces and the beach dry up, you'll be paying $20 for the same parking space. If we were to stick to a straight fee mm -hmm. for the entire year, mm -hmm. you'd probably just cut your um, <clears throat> the amount of money you're going to take in for parking by two thirds. And in, in my limited delving into this matter, we're receiving no revenue for the time period that Mr. Bandilla, because we're not oh, the least doesn't. So we're receiving no money. This allows per that email for him to pay additional revenue and use it for the benefit of his customers. So it's it's now uh, not revenue neutral. It is an added benefit for the town. And then those subsequent rates develop in March um, or April. I doubt that we're, we're getting much down there in the parking lots anyway. It sounds like it's a win-win for the town and for Mr. Bendella. So I'm in okay. favor. Yes, Who's going to supervise it? Let me, let me just work the board and I'll come back to you. Please, Selectman. We'll see. Yes, sir. Can you Give us a rough idea how many times between March 15th and May 15th we actually open the parking lots. I know there's a few shows, but it's going to be five times maybe, three They've times. They've been rescheduling now. They're starting on March 15th each year now at the casino for shows. Yeah. And we understand that they're going to be producing a heavier schedule each year. So we're going to be opening quite frequently. The other day we opened and we made $1,000 in one night. And that's what I'm saying. But basically th Monday through... Thursday, unless you have well, a day Sunday like through today. Thursday, you're not going to. We're not even going to be open at all. Unless you have a day like today, uh, or you know, we, we get that. We get those three or four days between the beginning of April and the end of May, where you can't get to the beach because it's so right. crowded. There's no parking right. available at all. On those days, of course, we're open and uh, we're full. So what we're doing is we, for basically for that two month period, we're getting a, a hundred and thirty a hundred and ten dollars for that period where normally we'd get nothing or if if we if they did have a show we might get ten dollars here, ten dollars there. Yeah. But we are getting money mm -hmm. over and above what they'd have to have t they'd have to have eleven shows for us to collect that anyways mm -hmm. in that in that space. So I, I think it's the Grey House Greyhurst has used this for years. Too. Right. Well I think it's I think it's a space now that we're getting money where we probably weren't before. Thank you, sir. Select model. It's upfront money, and it's guaranteed money. In the other case, you might get it, you might not. I take the upfront money with the guarantee. Thank you, sir. Select model. You had a, a final comment. I, why can't you go part way between what you think the prime number would be at the peak of the summer, say twenty dollars a day, and go to maybe ten dollars a day? And, and charge them that for each day they're there. And who's going to supervise this? Who's going to if somebody buys ten parking spaces leased between that preseason time period? Who's going to figure out who's there and who's parking there and what? Who's going to enforce that? Well, recreation does. Okay, that should be. I'll make the motion. Exciting. Is there a second? Second, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, there's a motion. 
Uh, there's a second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Selectman Woolsey opposed. Roman, any other new business? Roman 10 consent agenda, and does anybody want to address uh, Mr. Moody's uh, uh, discussion about the public hearing for the uh, tree uh, issue in the commissioner? And uh, Mr. Welch, did we have a public hearing for that? We did not, did we? No. Okay. So uh, I would. Next week? And we could strike that from the agenda? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Waddell, would you, like? would you please read the agenda striking uh, number four, please? Uh, one, Parade and Public Gathering Licenses, Seacoast Ride oh for God. PKU, 050514. Yes, I'm trying 5K Entertainment Licenses and Posted Permits, Wally's Pub, 144 Ashworth Ave, Millie's on L Street, Posted Permits for Entertainment License, already approved, Ron's Landing, World's Greatest Karaoke Bar, <laughs> uh, Severy... <laughs> Savoy Square Bistro signing up oh, new elderly exemptions. Do you want to read all of them? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay. That's why he stuck you. Mulready <laughs> Map, lot 146, 42. Longo Map, lot 144, 60, 102. Uh, Alta Vesta Map, lot 265, 49. Blatchford Map, 72, 26. 84 Mill Road, Realty Trust Map, lot 145, 27. Uh, Lasca Bow map, lot 133-68-12. Grassy map, lot 274-52-1. Uh, new disabled exemption, Putnam map, lot 205-24. New veterans tax credit, uh, Jokin map, lot 128-1. Wood map, lot 172-634. 11G Street, termination of lease land agreement. Uh, Cifrelin, new lease of leased land agreement, Horan. Usually we don't m read the names. Well, that's what I asked. I know. Uh, and they said yes. Usually <laughs> it's just the first part. I don't think it's a good idea to read some of the names sometimes. But this one, it didn't really matter. Public information. And, and, and it is posted in, in comments. Posted, uh, Julie yeah. noted uh, <coughs> there's a motion, there's a second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Roman 11, entertainment licenses under review. One, community oven, 845 Lafayette Road. Number two, casino ballroom, 169 Ocean Boulevard. Number three, Bernie's Bar and Grill, 73 Ocean Boulevard. Roman 12, closing comments. Any? I just want to say, yes, I, wasn't, I, I thought that you didn't want to do the... Um, Union contracts, so I thought there wasn't. Oh, that, that's I, 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 I don't want to do the union contracts, but oh. there were some good points, and, and yeah. I am doing them. And so, um, uh, closing comments any closing comments? Okay. None, okay. Seeing none, um, a motion to adjourn, Mary Louise. I will so move to adjourn at 9 36 p.m. Second, other things to sign there, Fred. All those in favor, unanimous. Yes.